Brandon Ayuk unfollows the 49ers, following the blueprint of Debo Samuel to a T. Exactly like we've mapped out the entire offseason. Trying to prepare people for a shaky, rocky road on the way to a contract extension. And at the end of the day, all that's being done by this wait on signing Brandon Ayuk, similar to waiting on Debo, similar to waiting on signing Bosa, is creating animosity between player and team and player and, and fan base. And now we have the same unraveling of a situation going on as we had Debo. A lot of people say things really, really, uh, sh you know, shallow and casual comments like, this is not a problem, Debo did this. Yeah, exactly. Debo did this and Debo played horribly. And he admitted that it was because of the holdout. Ayuk's going into full-blown hibernation, hibernation holdout mode. The same blueprint is a bad blueprint. What don't people understand about that? Ayuk unfollowing the Niners is, is phase one of what I'm predicting to unfold all offseason long. Phase two will be some sort of soft re trade request, whether it be unofficial, behind closed doors, in an interview, not really officially requested. Debo's was what you would consider a soft trade request. It was behind closed doors in an interview that was, wasn't even video recorded. And it was creating pressure. As the Niners and every team walks into the NFL draft coming up in a very short period of time later this month. And the only leverage, and he doesn't have a lot because he's under contract. The only leverage he really has is to request a trade, apply a little pressure. And with that applied pressure, he'll be able to potentially uh, maneuver and finagle you know, some sort of early talks to get this thing going and get the ball rolling. But if anybody thinks that that he's for sure getting traded off this news, that is absolutely ridiculous. If anybody thinks he can't get traded off this news, that's absolutely ridiculous. There are so many different components and different ways that this thing can go. We're going to break it all down right now. The Fantasy Football Show begins right now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. Oh my God, Smitty! This is just the Debo situation. This is just the Debo situation. And we already got four or five comments that have come in and said the exact same thing. <laughs> here, here's one right here. Debo did the same thing. There's not, nothing to see here. Oh, yeah? Are you sure about that, Murphy? Are you sure about that? Because that's the problem, Murphy. The problem is that Brandon Ayuk... Following the Debo Samuel blueprint, which we predicted from the jump, if you were here the entire time, Murphy, that this is creating the same animosity and problem that occurred with Debo Samuel. Fan base starts to hate Debo. Debo starts to hate the fan base because the fan base, 50% or more, are nasty and just completely awful to him. I was defending Debo more than the fan base was. As I probably will defend Brandon Ayuk once the fan base turns on him. Which if you go into any comment section anywhere where this news is announced, you'll find 40% of people. 40% of people will say, I unfollowed him then. Or forget him. We don't need him. Screw him. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Everybody and their mother has something to say on this topic. And that's okay. Because everybody's got an opinion. I got an opinion. My opinion has been pretty on point this entire way. This is the Debo Samuel situation unfolding, unfortunately, Murphy. That's the part that's so hilarious to me. Is someone says, uh, Debo did this. <laughs> De Debo did this. Don't worry. Debo did this too. <laughs> Don't worry. Debo yeah, what did Debo do, Murphy? What did Debo do? He showed up, wasn't in shape. 
And it's not because he didn't work out. He worked out. He wasn't working out with the team. He wasn't working out with the NFL trainers every day in the facility, dialed in, building rapport. What did Bosa do during his holdout year? What did Debo do during his holdout year? Put down the worst film they could have ever, ever put down, and they both said, man, it was because of the holdout, right? It was because of the situation. Debo blamed the coaching staff and the organization for that. It was very evident when he said he put it behind him and he wants to move forward and not put film like that ever on tape again. Ayuk is heading in that direction if the Niners don't step up and sign this man to an extension. Now, the likelihood of him getting an extension is, is far more likely than him getting traded. We've said that from day one. Yet people don't listen. People want to hear what they want to hear. People want to draw conclusions the way they want to draw conclusions. That's fine. I really don't care. At the end of the day, there's probably, I would say, a 10 to 15% chance this thing could spir spiral out of control. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter what you think, as I've said over and over and over. I have about 10 live streams on this. I have about 10 live streams on this, and people still come in and say, Debo did this! Debo did this, Smitty! What are you talking about? Debo did this, Smitty! <laughs> no, no, no shit! No shit! Really? We know that. We've been saying that. It's unfortunate that it's following the Debo plan of attack. This is not the blueprint you want to be deployed. I assure you. Debo did this, Smitty! <laughs> but Debo did it! Ayuk is following a plan that will fail him. It's not his fault. I'm not mad at Ayuk. I'm mad at the Niner organization for the Niner way. Let's wait until September. Let's wait until August. Let's wait until whatever. There's there's still a, a 10 to, let's call it a 10 to 13% chance that he still somehow gets traded how does that develop smitty well it develops if this guy wants to be paid 28 million dollars a year and the niners want to pay him 23 and a half and if they're not even close to agreeing Ayuk's not just gonna bow down and sign a 23.5 million dollar deal he'll bet on himself he'll bank on him at a certain point he'll bank on himself and if he banks on himself that's when potentially the team opens the door to the possibility of, hey, we don't have them locked down. We don't feel comfortable walking into next year this way. We would rather trade him if we can't get him locked down than keep him if the offer is too good to be true. It's that simple. If you think he won't get traded because he's good or you think he won't get traded because you like him, <laughs> if you think he won't get traded because the Niners said we're not trading him, I've got a bridge to sell you. The dig situation unraveled really quickly. The, the Buffalo Bills moved on and said we're not trading Diggs. Diggs sent out one tweet and he was gone. And that was against all odds. Your boy told you Diggs was very likely to be traded regardless of the dead cap because he was dragging the locker room down, he was dragging the team down, he was dragging Josh Allen down, and he was dead weight, and he was worth getting rid of. But Smitty, you can't get rid of him. The cap is insane. There's no way they... Oh, he just got traded. Never mind, Smitty. Keep going, Smitty. Ayuk is going to softly... Not necessarily, I demand a trade. I'm going to be traded. I don't want to be here anymore. The Niners say, okay, send them packing. That's not how it works. The NFL draft is approaching. These teams that need wide receivers will fill their wide receiver rooms via the most uh, littered full of talent NFL draft wide receiver room you've ever seen. This wide receiver pool is absolutely insane. This 2024 rookie wide receiver pool is going to fill all of these rooms and, and, and needs, these wide receiver needs for these teams. Uh, you can't request a trade later. I'm not saying he even wants to be traded. Tyreek Hill didn't want to be traded. His agent said, let's request a trade to get the ball rolling, apply some pressure, get some incoming offers going, interested parties calling up Shanahan and Kyle and just saying, hey, what do you want for him? What if we offer him this? This is the contract. Whatever. The contract is also going to be given at the at the time of 
potential trade talk, right? Because the moment you trade for a, a contract year player or a franchise tag player like T. Higgins, the trade is announced and the contract is announced simultaneously, in parallel, meaning the receiving party would never make the trade to begin with if the long-term deal was not worked out because no one, no one is going to give up draft capital that would be required to get Ayuk or Higgins or in the case of Tyreek Hill for a player that wasn't locked down long-term. That's the objective here. So Ayuk is going to receive offers. If Ayuk gets offers that are so above what the Niners are willing to pay, and Ayuk sees those during the trade request process, then guess what? The likelihood of him getting traded goes up. The likelihood of a team wanting to overpay Ayuk will be likely to overpay in draft capital. That's how the doors open. And if anybody doesn't understand that, they're either holding goggles that are this thick, which is understandable. I got a lot of people in here with big goggles on, and I, I love you all. Okay, and that's you. That's fine. You want to be that that group, not the second group. The second group, if you don't have goggles on, you're casual. You're a casual. You're a casual, and that's okay too. You're here to learn. But the the the, the teams in the NFL don't just have nobody. They don't have. Oh, we're on. We're not trading this player. This tag goes on this player. That's a non-tradable player. John and Kyle have already said. Where our door is always open for a trade offer, meaning if somebody gives the Niners an offer they cannot refuse, that's part number one, component number one, and the, the divide is so big between Ayuk and the Niners contract-wise that they can't resolve it, he gets traded. That's where that, that 10 to 13% chance of a trade happening enters the picture. Doesn't mean he's likely to. 10 to 15, 10 to 13, 10 to 15 percent is not a big number, but it's significant. It's a significant number. The odds of him getting a contract with the Niners are far greater than getting traded. I've said that from day one, but people love to hear different things. I don't know. I don't know why they do. They do. They, they just do. <laughs> but I can tell you right now that things are getting, you could say, worse the, the, the pressure is getting applied. It's becoming a greater amount of pressure on the Niners. He's starting to take these next steps. These, this is the Debo plan of attack, as we said, but it's not a plan you want Ayuk on because the plan is proven to have Ayuk producing bad numbers in his first year on his new contract as he is away from the team, not creating that rapport that is still needed to be created between uh, a still learning and improving quarterback in Brock Purdy and his number one wide receiver or number two wide receiver if you view Debo as the number one. But this is not good for the Niners 2024 season. If you're a Niner fan in here, oh, we got another one. We got another one. But Debo did it. <laughs> but Debo did it. He did this. He did the exact same thing. <laughs> he did. He did the same thing. Debo did it. <laughs> they keep coming in. They keep coming in. <laughs> they're, they're not. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. <laughs> they're not going to stop. <laughs> they're going to. People are so casual. They don't know what. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, whoever that was. <laughs> but Debo did it. No crap. No shit, bro. <laughs> no shit. Thanks for the. Thanks for the great roadmap. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Purdy's, Purdy's big contract is going to be absolutely insane if he plays well this year. He's got to play well this year, though. Everybody assuming Purdy's going to reset the market is kind of hilarious to me because he's got to have a killer year. Otherwise, he's not resetting shit. But if he goes out and has a, a monster, everybody hashtag Debo did it. <laughs> But he did it! <laughs> oh, he did! Okay, close the live stream down, guys. We got this one wrong. <laughs> we got this one wrong. Debo already did this. Close it down. Apparently, he had a good year. I don't know. <laughs> Debo did it. Um, oh, bro. But anyway, um, <laughs> hashtag Debo did it. Let's take some phone calls. Dial in, dial in, dial in. 
Uh, oh, oh, another piece of news real quickly before we, we open the phone line. The phone line's open if you got the number dialing. Um, your boy also has this to touch on, um, which directly impacts Debo Samuel if a deal gets done. If hashtag Debo did it, if, if Devontae Smith signs his extension then we're looking at a whole different ball game. The the number being kicked around for Devontae Smith is 25-26 mil. And if he gets that, that's going to uh, uh, you know obviously the guaranteed money is going to affect the 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 Debo or the Ayuk deal. So if the Niners have a certain number in mind guarantee wise and yearly wise and it doesn't uh, it doesn't jive the new adjusted you know Devontae Smith value and all these different you know contracts that come rolling in and the Niners aren't willing to negotiate up. If they're saying you're going to get what Debo gets, Debo did it. Debo got paid this. You're going to get if you're going to follow Debo's plan. Debo did it. You're going to get Debo's money. <laughs> you can't follow Debo's blueprint and arrive at a different number. <laughs> you just can't. Uh, if if. If Devontae Smith gets 26 mil a year, 25 million a year, that's what the number is being kicked around. I'm just telling you what the number is. I'm not saying he's worth it. I'm not saying he's going to get it. I'm not saying he's not worth it. I love Devontae Smith. But Devontae Smith gets 25 and a half million, and let's say he gets a significantly higher number than his, than the guaranteed money of 50 million that, that, that Ridley got. And the Niners are like, look, I don't care what Devontae Smith got. This is what we're paying you, $24.5 million a year. Take it or leave it. And he goes, $25.5 and a half? I'm not doing this. I'm banking on myself. That's when the Niners say fine. Okay, if, if they're not willing to stretch and budge, if they can't get to common ground, if they're really far apart and that gap is not a, a gap you can close, that's when the trade topics start coming up. That's when teams will inquire. That's when the Niners would potentially strike. Where would he go? Buffalo would be a fantastic landing spot for Ayuk. Does the do the Niners want to send him to the to the Chiefs? No, probably not going to happen. But they also can't cherry pick what they want to do as long as it's not in inner division. You know, especially if they can go across the the sea and go to the other conference, they can't really get picky, right? And if you're not willing to pay Ayuk the amount of money he wants, you're kind of saying he's more plug and play to you than you're trying to make out. So therefore, how dangerous and how scary is it to send him to another team if you've come to that conclusion? So the Buffalo Bills, we don't want to make the Buffalo Bills better, but it doesn't matter. you got to send him where you got to send him. You're also going to take a lot from them that you believe will be great. So in the case of the Niners, you get the 28 overall and maybe even more draft capital, maybe a fourth or whatever it is. I know Niner fans think Ayuk's worth the top five pick. He's not. He's worth a 17 to 32 pick. And then you could the more the deeper you go, the more you could potentially get thrown in. But if the Buffalo Bills give the 28, which is a fresh rookie wide receiver contract, like Leggett, like Keon Coleman, like uh, Malachi Corley, like a uh, uh, Ricky Parasol, a Lad McConkey, these guys on a cheap rookie deal are attractive to any team, especially when you got to pay Brock Purdy and you got to start kicking cans down the road. Thinking about Ayuk Purdy and all these guys, you got to pay. You got you've got to do something. You can't just continue to. You have some of the highest contracts at the at different positions in the NFL, and so th there's certainly. Uh, there's certainly, Nathan says drunk, a second at best. A 28 for Ayuk is very, very possible. But yeah, Niner fans think he's worth like in the top 15 and he's not. And that's fine. I get it. I like the ninth. Uh, this is like the ninth time he's unfollowed. LOL, no worries. We knew you'd say that. <laughs> Debo did it! <laughs> oh. Um... Phone lines are open. Dial in, dial in, dial in. Uh, be very interesting to see what you guys think of this situation. Uh, hashtag Debo did it in the chat, please. Let's let's let it rain. Debo did it. Hashtag Debo did it in the chat for a little bit. Uh, Bears. Uh, I don't think so, Munoz. That's uh, that's too costly for that organization right now. They're in the business of I think accumulating, not not uh, not trying to get one guy giving up multiple things. Um, plus, the Bears have the nine pick. Like you can't. You, you can't trade the nine pick for Ayuk, my guy. Um, so uh, that's certainly not in the cards. I mean, could you give the nine and and, thir and thirty one swap and then, but still not enough. Like Ayuk is not worth the nine. 
There's no, even if you gave, you did some sort of, you know, it, 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 it just would it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't fly. It wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a good trade. You need somebody that has draft capital, like in the 19 to 28 range. Um, there could be something else that goes on, but, uh, what's up, Matt, uh, mile high magic. Hey, what's going on? Smitty? What's going on, pal? Not much. So, where do you think? Because I have a lot of stock in IU. I love that man. Where do you think he's going to go if he leaves the Niners? Uh, Ayuk, if he leaves the Niners, yeah. Uh, I again, I just want to preface that there's probably a ten to thirteen percent chance that he actually gets traded. The 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 whole requesting a trade, people are just like I said, a lot of casuals will hear it and they'll say Smitty said he's getting traded. No, I said he's going to request a trade. Where it goes from there depends on too many components. The two main ones being how far apart are the Niners and Ayuk, and we don't have that information. And then does a team want to overpay and create an offer that the Niners can't refuse while they're far apart and can't see any kind of closure, you know, or any kind of progress? Then they say to themselves, look, we can't, we're not going to be able to meet on, at middle ground here with Ayuk, and this offer is too good to be true. That's all that needs to be required. And and I know I know a lot of people don't understand that because they just want to think with their, their fandom goggles that they've got on that they're this thick. But that's okay. We're, we're here to educate. But what team do I think he could go to? Buffalo is definitely in the cards. you got to think of a team that's willing to give up that first rounder, but they it can't be a high first rounder. It can't even really be 17 was too high. You know, there had the, the, people were cooking up those those make believe offers, and and we came in and, and broke down that that rumor and said probably not true. You know, so a lot of this channel's responsibility, in my opinions, to come in and just give an opinion on the news. I don't break news; I give my opinion and breakdown on news. In my opinion, an assessment was that this Jaguar offer was probably fabricated, but we kicked it around. Ended up being from what we what we know to be something that wasn't t entirely true or true at all. Could add some true components to it, but but the Jaguars 17 is almost too high. That's why like Zay Jones was was in that potential phantom offer to be thrown back and etc. Uh, and, and there was other pieces to it, right? Zay Jones doesn't compare, man. No, I know, I know, but 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 Zay Jones. The, the the point was they had to throw Zay in and other pieces to it to try and make that trade, you know, fit the bill. But like 17 for Ayuk straight up probably is too costly. I don't think a team would give up 17. I'd love to see him go to the Bills. I mean, they've got the money to do they, it. They, clearly, that's what he wants. They, they, the Bills, I mean, they got to move some stuff around. I wouldn't say they, they, they just have the money. I would say that they could make it work. But the Bills or the Baltimore Ravens make a lot of sense to me. The Dallas Cowboys, if Jerry Jones is in a mood of we have to do something, and if he's not, if he's in a I don't want to spend a dime mood, then he's not going to go after him. But I could see Jerry doing that. The problem is, would the Niners make that trade? Would the Niners want to give Dallas? I don't know. Maybe they're not scared of Dallas at all. Um, tough to say. There are some parts of this where you say to yourself, the Niners probably would not want to hand Ayuk to a couple of these teams. But then you got to ask yourself that same question that I asked earlier, though. If the Niners are unwilling to commit to him at what I believe to be reasonably fair, you know, a, a monetary value then they're obviously saying they don't really truly believe it's really all Ayuk, it's Ayuk in this system. And that if Ayuk goes somewhere else, he'll be good, but they're not scared to give him away to somebody. If they were that scared to give him away to somebody, they would just sign him, which might end up happening. There's a higher, higher, much higher likelihood that Ayuk gets signed and the Niners are just doing the Niner way, but there's also the potential that they're far apart. And the problem is the thing that people don't hear the thing that people come into this show and they they just, like I said, casually don't understand or they don't stay long enough or they don't really know my point is this. It's not that the Niners don't want to sign Ayuk. Listen to me. This is it in a nutshell. If anybody's confused on my stance, here you go. It's not that the Niners don't want to sign Ayuk. They want to sign him for a certain amount and they want to sign him when they want, which is after the NFL draft, their way. The problem with that are things like Ridley, and Devontae Smith, and CeeDee Lamb, and Justin Jefferson, and other contracts that vault up the value and cost of entry to get Ayuk locked down changes his mindset of what he's worth, and then you get further and further apart. 
And then when it comes time to let's do it the Niner way and sign him, you are further apart than you would have been had you just tried to hit this at the front when you could have maybe kicked a lot of the money up front anyway and saved the team money in 2024 and created more cap space. It doesn't make any sense. The whole point is the Niner way to sign players is stupid. And, and it, it creates this animosity between fan base and player and player and team like it did with Debo. The Debo way created Debo to have a bad year. The Niner way had Bosa and Debo both performing horribly coming off of their holdout year. So somebody explain to me how the Debo way is good. Somebody explain to me one time how the Niner way is good. The answer is you can't. And the problem is the likelihood of this not working out goes up. Even if it's minute or 5% every couple weeks, it goes up or 2%. It goes up. The likelihood of this not getting done goes up every week they wait because of the other contracts, because of the anger he's going to have that he's not getting taken care of, the fact that he's got to be put in a position to unfollow the team, the fact that he's just not getting the deal like some of these other wide receivers are getting from the jump of free agency, bro. Like, why is why are these other guys potentially getting looked at? Why does my team need to wait? And why do I have to sit here and wait until the draft's over when any options and very little leverage he has are off the table? It's like, if somebody okay, explain okay. to me how it's possible that this is a good situation. How is it good to wait? It's not good to wait. It so, only puts the Niners Smitty. that much more likely of not getting this done. Doesn't mean they won't get it done. So if you're the 49ers it, and you've got this situation with a guy that wants a bunch of money, it's a bad situation, he doesn't feel good about the team, he's not getting the work he deserves, and you've got the 31st pick in the draft, you can go get another receiver. Why wouldn't you cut your losses on that player? Well, look, they think Ayuk, the Niners, the reason Ayuk is is a priority to the Niners in the way that they look at priorities, which is really backwards, <laughs> um, is they feel he's on a whole other level, right? It, they wouldn't be considering giving him 25, 24. Do you think they think that over Samuel? They think, you think they, they, they value Ayuk over Samuel? I'm not saying they, they value him over or under Samuel. They, they value them probably pretty equally. And I think you take either one off this team, it's a very different team. This is not a team that can win a Super Bowl if you take McCaffrey off, Debo off, or Ayuk off. I'm not necessarily saying that there aren't a bunch of other teams that have that same sort of, you know, problem you take jamar chase off of the Bengals. do they win a super bowl no you take uh you take uh especially quarterbacks you take a quarterback off almost any team are you winning a super bowl probably not so that's not necessarily a surprise but it is a team that's so loaded with talent you do have a window here to win a super bowl and someone's got to be kidding themselves if they think the niners cannot win a super bowl they certainly can if all these pieces stay healthy the moment Christian McCaffrey falls off, this is a different team. It starts falling apart. The window starts closing. doesn't mean they're not still a top 15 team in the NFL or top 12 team in the NFL, potentially. It just means they're not. They're no longer the number one, number two, number three team in their conference. But but at the end of the day, bro, they view Ayuk as important enough to try and get this done, clearly. And they should. He's he's an amazing route runner. He's He runs you know routes... He's getting so good at certain aspects of his game. You could definitely say he's in the top 10 wide receivers in certain categories and skill sets in the NFL. Some would call him a top 10 wide receiver, period. I think there's it's a little bit more complicated than that. There are a lot of good wide receivers. Not to mention, I think, Adunze, Neighbors, and Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd rather have all three of those guys in a millisecond over Brandon Ayuk. And those are three rookie, incoming rookie receivers that now take take you know, spots in that top 10. So Ayuk's not in my top 10 overall, but I think he's he's on the verge of being a, a, a fantasy football wide receiver one. And he's definitely a number one for handfuls of teams. Half the NFL, he'd be the number one wide receiver on their team because he's right around that 12 to 15 in the NFL for wide receivers. So that's, a, that's an important player. You know, like Debo and him are probably ranked very similar. Debo's the yak monster. Debo owns, I think, four or five of the biggest yak yard. Uh, he's a yak yard leader in, I think, four or five seasons out of the last eight. 
he has the high or he has the highest. Oh yeah, he's amazing. He, he's absolutely so. Like anybody that says that Ayuk's better than Debo or Debo's better than Ayuk, this is a big debate. This is not some you know foregone conclusion. That, that it, it's but but the Niners need to get this done. If the Niners don't get it done, then they need to get a player that they can replace him with that has a lot of upside, like Leggett, like Malachi Corley, like uh, like uh, Keon Coleman. Like those would be fantastic additions. Alad McConkey, even these would be good players. Like the Niners would be pretty solid if they could replace Ayuk with that. Are the I are, are the Niners better with Ayuk than without him? Yes. Do I think they win a Super Bowl without Ayuk? Probably not. So this is on the Niners to to get this done. The Niners need to get this done. The Niners are not getting it done. I mean, no. They'll probably get it done. The odds are much like I said, much greater they get it done than they don't get it done. But. The longer they wait, the harder it is to get it done. So it, they're just making it more difficult for themselves to to thread this needle. Right at the beginning of the offseason, the eye of the needle is this big. And they just need to throw the thread right through and it's done. His, his desired money amount's more acceptable to him. The, the, the contract would have been a lot cheaper. The guaranteed money would have been lower. The animosity would have been zero. The fan base would have been 100% behind him. Now he's got a divided fan base. Look at the comments of any video on any comment. Go to Twitter and look at the announcement of, of him unfollowing on anybody's social media page, and you'll see half negativity, half positivity. I defended Debo more than half the fan base did when Debo was doing this little song and dance because guess what? This is widely accepted process in the NFL during a contract year. This is not Ayuk's fault. This is not Debo's fault. The teams are very much condoning this behavior, and it is what it is. It's widely accepted. They've, they put rules around it to where it, it curbs it a little bit. Uh, players can't hold out really anymore because you'll miss game checks. It's not something that they, they'll they take the fines and reverse them like they did back in the Zeke Elliott days when Zeke Elliott had 2 or $3 or $4 million dollars racked up in fines and they just wave them and it didn't even matter holding out didn't matter now it's different holding out's different but it doesn't mean that he doesn't have leverage right now leverage is small because he's under contract people don't understand that they think he has no leverage he has leverage Tyreek Hill had leverage it was small but it opened a can of worms once a team feels they can't sign you you are less attractive to them on their roster because in the contract year, they're going to lose you. Or they have to make some sort of franchise tag decision. And even then, they might not be able to, depending on your contract, etc. There's a lot of moving parts to it. But on a, like Dak Prescott right now. Dak Prescott's never been more tradable to the Dallas Cowboys internally than he is right now. Why? And he has a no trade clause. Why? Because Dak Prescott is not getting extended and they don't know what's in store for the team or where he wants to go next year. He gets to decide, like Kirk Cousins, to go wherever he wants. He has a no franchise tag clause and a no trade clause. So Dak is completely a wild card. And the, the Cowboys are putting Dak in that position. I'm going to do another video on this later. But this is what people need to understand. And it's it's this is par for the course. His leverage is small. But he has leverage. And uh, 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 Tyreek Hill proved that. Tyreek Hill and his agent requested a trade when there was no possibility of him getting traded. Once the other team started sending massive offers that the Chiefs couldn't accept, Tyreek Hill was no longer going to accept the, the offers sent by KC. He was getting bigger offers from other teams. Did he have control over the team actually trading him? They could have said no, but they saw the market value for Tyreek and they said, he's not going to sign. We're going to eventually lose him. Let's get as much value as we can now. That's how it works. Casuals don't understand that because they got goggles on this big and they think their team will never trade their great player. That's just the way it is. Uh, hold on real quick, uh, Mile High. Put yourself on mute real quick. Uh, Young has been waiting a long time. Um, and Ron Navy's on, on hold as well. Young, what's up? You're live. What up, Smitty? How's it going? What's up, bro? Um... Yeah, I just had a question. I don't. I mean, I don't know for sure, but like, are the Niners the only team in the league that addresses the off season like this? They're the only team that does it to the degree they do it, and it's like they're so stubborn with it. It doesn't work. There's no advantage. There's not. There's not one person that can call in and give me an advantage of waiting until later 
when and even if there was one small one that we weren't considering and it's not financially here because to my knowledge extending depot would save the team money this year so there, there's it's only a this is how we do it we've always done it this way and we're going to continue to do it this way it only creates that divide between the fan base and the team and the player and the team which is twofold that's not one that's two different problems because once Debo was getting all kinds of negative hate comments and hate messages and the Niner fan base is as brutal as it comes when it when it comes to to, to yelling at their own players and chastising their own players when Moster got hurt something he couldn't even prevent this guy got threats bro Moster was treated like dog water by the Niner fan base it was awful. And, and, and a true Niner fan can admit that. And so it's it's twofold bad in that department alone. But the whole thing of Ayuk is not getting a dime cheaper by waiting. Not a dime. He's only increasing. And even if the Niners say, we're not going to increase, he can think whatever he wants. I don't care what Devontae Smith signs. I don't care what Ridley got. This is what we set aside and this is where we're going to give them. If that's the case, they're going to be so far apart by the time they get back to the drawing board that they're not going to agree on anything. And if the Niners are willing to bump up their numbers to match what Ridley and Devontae Smith have done to the market, then why? how is that advantageous to the team? Because now you're spending more money when you didn't need to. It's like, it, bro, it's this simple. It's like me telling you that tomorrow morning, Apple stock will be you know, $988, okay? But it's $950 right now. Tomorrow, it'll be $998, okay? And I promise you, it's only gonna get better from there. Let's just say I could do that. This is a fictitious thing. I'm not a a, 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 a stock advisor. Um, And you wait until tomorrow to buy it? Why? Why? Because when I buy my stocks, on t Tuesdays, you know, or tomorrow, Saturday. I buy my stock on Saturdays. I don't buy stocks on Fridays. I'm just going to wait until Saturday when it's $998 versus the nine, whatever, 40 that I gave you. That's what it is. The Niners have a way. It's like almost like they're, they're locked into this process and they just don't deviate no matter what. And Debo, out of all people, deserved that deviation for all that he put on the field that year prior playing running back for a team that lost every single running back because the coach got them all hurt, playing RB, playing wide receiver, throwing the ball. This guy was all over the place. You owed it to him to walk into the offseason and say immediately point at him and say, you are a valuable young man. Here's your deal. But instead, they put Debo, and don't blame it on Debo. They put Debo in a position where to get his money the way that this is widely accepted by the NFL, he had to unfollow, not show up, get out of shape, and you can blame it on Debo all you want. I don't blame it on Debo. I blame a little bit on Debo, but I blame most of it on the team. Then he had a bad year. How is that advantageous to the Niners to let Debo have a bad year because you're stubborn? And if you know this, this didn't work well with Bosa, you know this didn't work well with Debo. Debo did it. If, if you know that these actually didn't do well, for both players, why would you put Ayuk on the same Debo Samuel track? Answer me that. Riddle me that, young. Riddle me how it's beneficial whatsoever to put Ayuk on the same track as Debo and Bosa. Tell me. <laughs> so, so that so basically, that's it. That they're they're the the Niners are the only team that that does this in this way, like. Extend their I'm, players after the draft. I'm not saying that teams don't do that, but the Niners are sticklers for it. And you also, you're the Niner fan, right? Yeah. You uh, you also have some of the biggest contracts in the NFL at certain positions. So you are in the spotlight more of doing this with the big name players. Like, I mean, we, we could dance around how other teams might be a fault of this too, but I don't care about that right now. I care about this man right in front of your face. Ayuk, I'm not. I'm not trying to compare other teams so we can slap their wrist too and say, "Hey, why'd you do this?" I, like, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The Niners do this 100 percent of the time. I, I mean, I, I don't know what you're trying to say here. I, I like, it's not smart, bro. Answer the question. Like, how, how on earth is this smart for the team when you have a proven track record of it not working out that year off the contract year? 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess that's just, you know, that's just how their order of operations, I guess. I, and, I don't know. I yeah. Mean, it doesn't it, seem like. Doesn't work. You know, but, I mean, I've seen it. Saw it with Bosa and saw it with Debo. I, I, I don't know. It seemed like once they got paid, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was different. It's 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 re- there's no there's no explanation. There's no argument. There's nothing. Uh, you ask a Niner, fan, well, that's just what. This is the common response. What you just said. It was almost like you're reading it from an in- index card. It's just the way the Niners do it. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> and it sucks. It's a stupid way to do it. The Niners are one of the best organizations in the entire National Football League in certain avenues, bro. You guys, and I don't know if it's going to be that way anymore because Adam Peters is gone in the draft department, but you guys draft amazingly. But Adam Peters is a big reason why. Um, the Niners are probably yeah, one of the worst oh. offseason contract-related, quarterback-related, especially quarterback personnel decision-making teams in the National Football League. It, 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 and, the, and it all comes in it all contract decision making quarterback personnel making decisions worse in the league okay yeah I, I don't I, like if you solved a couple of those problems I mean the Niners would do almost everything right but it's like cra- crapping the bed over and over and over it's like saying well the Niners like to crap the bed in the in the in the off season with this kind of stuff but it's what they do they're consistent with it. So that's just what they do. We're, we're here for it. <laughs> like, there's do no. That, do you think that it's at all like. Because, you know, you said you blame Debo a little bit. There, there's a little other, bit. You know. A little bit. Obviously, obviously, there's been other players in the NFL, you know, not on the Niners that have, once they got paid, they kind of, you know, they lost that, that hunger. You know what I mean? A lot of it. So do, do you think. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt you, but a lot of yeah. it, is, a lot of it no. isn't that they lose the hunger. Sometimes that is the case. A lot of it is there's such a lengthy contract negotiation process with some sort of holdout that a lot of times it leaves that player like Debo in a position where he gets injured because he wasn't there. He wasn't there, and there's something. It doesn't matter if you're training with Bill with the 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 rubber bands and the and the and the the chains around your neck. It doesn't matter what you're doing if you're away from the team. You're not getting that 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 same course of treatment that everybody's getting. You're not driving with your team, and you walk in late. It doesn't matter. You're not going to have as, as good of a year as you would have. There's a reason since the beginning of time, and I've done this professionally for over 20 years, bro. There's a reason since the beginning of time, before Tom Brady entered the league, before I got Tom Brady and I got into the I got in the fantasy space right before Tom Brady got into the NFL. That's how. That's why it was really depressing when Tom Brady retired because he was the last player that I remember like from the jump of my career. I, since I've been doing this, bro, I, time and time again, one of the most dangerous things for, for a player's production is a holdout. It, it, because a holdout either creates an injury or it creates bad play or both. It's, it's one of the most telling, telegraphed problems in the NFL. And the Niners should know this. They should know that Causing Ayuk any sort of delay in getting there to jive with the team increases his likelihood of injury and increases his likelihood of putting bad uh, bad play on the field. And, and Debo Bosa are case in point, two for two. You're going to go three for three? Why? Because it's the Niner way? Okay, good job. Enjoy your final season of trying to win a Super Bowl with Ayuk playing badly. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense if you're yeah. and the reason I don't blame Debo if you want to say, well, blame Debo, he came in fat and overweight, Smitty. The reason I don't blame Debo is because we knew the Niners wanted to give him the money and they would get it done. I predicted the trade request, but I didn't necessarily say he get traded. Just like I'm predicting Ayuk to do a soft trade request, and that mean that could be in an interview. It could be behind closed doors. It could be floated without officially being... It's just going to be some sort of leverage move and stab at it before the NFL draft, before these teams have no interest in him once they fill their wide receiver rooms with these elite rookie wide receivers. But what I'm trying to say is that Ayuk is sitting here 
in the offseason, like Debo was, and the team most likely will pay him. The team most like the odds of Debo or IU getting a contract signed is far more likely than him getting traded or even the combination of him getting traded and not signing a deal and banking on himself for one year, the odds of those combined are still lower than the odds of Debo getting a deal done with the Niners. I don't know how more abundantly clear I can be because people will recite differently that I'm saying something differently later than I'm not. I've been abundantly clear from day one. The odds of him signing are higher. So if in that case, just like Debo, we knew Debo would probably get his deal. 80% likely he was gonna get his deal. Why would you put the player in this position? If you're going to do it, why would you do that? Why would you try and hamper the player, which hampers the team, which hampers the likelihood of championship, while your window's closing? Why would you put Ayuk in a position where he even had a shot at playing bad football? When you're already going to pay him. Everyone's like, he's going to get paid. If he's going to get paid, pay him. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody can give me a good answer. Nobody. I guarantee it. So, so you've been you've been around this stuff for for uh, quite a while, like you say. You're in diapers. Yes. What 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 do you think? What do you think, though? Like, why do you think that they do it that way? I have no. I've been asking that question for like forty straight years, bro. I don't know. I, why do you think I just asked you it to you and everybody else over and over? I don't know. Give me one reason. Give me one yeah, reason. I don't know. I don't know why. There's no. It makes no sense. When you're going to pay anyway, and when when extending IUK actually saves you money, you're freeing up cash for 2024 by extending him because you can put a lot of it front loaded. It makes no sense. Yeah, you could have paid him a lot less than you're. You know, obviously going to have to pay him now. You would have just got so I don't know. But, yeah. yeah. All right, hey, one. hold on, Young. Let me go over to Ron. Ron, real quickly, let me read these two super chats. Niners think they're smarter than everyone. Shake my head, says Rock Out. Rock Out, appreciate you. Uh Jonathan Bunchy, aka Bunchy Cobble, uh says first live in a little while, but I have still been watching and liking great takes on Mahomes and Kyron, learning a lot from your draft approaches. And excited to apply this to the year. Smitty to the moon. Uh, $10 hauler gets a moonshot. My boy, to the Jonathan. Moon. Any other super chats, file them on in. I'll uh, address them right away. I'm sorry if I delayed on those two. Uh, Bunchy dropping another $2 hauler right here. Says Josh Jacobs last year. Being away never helps. Exactly. It's it's like clockwork. It's like clockwork. You, can't, you, st- you spend time away. You have a bad year. I'm telling you, if there's one thing you take away from the 20 plus years of me doing this and watching and observing it is number one, there's a cutoff age for for RBs and wide receivers that that you'll miss once in a while. But if you bank on it, you're going to be right seven, eight times out of 10, maybe even eight, nine times out of 10. And then the other thing as well, and that, that number fluctuates is 28 right now for running backs. It's 30 for wide receivers. That, that means that at 30 and 28, Christian McCaffrey's 28, uh, and and there are wide receivers that are 30 right now. Diggs is 30, but he turns 31 in December. Those years, you can potentially have one more elite year. If you ever take anything from me, that is one thing that I could say over the hi- historical amount of time I've been doing this. 20 plus years, I've seen this, this happen time and time and time and time and time again. That's why when I said stay away from Eckler last year at age 28, and people said I was crazy because he went bonkers in 2022 it's because of those numbers and that data the second thing i'll say is that holding out creates injury or bad play or both those 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 are undeniable things on the average doesn't mean there aren't outliers it just means that you play this game enough and you bank on those things you will be right a a crazy amount of time more than you're wrong ron navy you're live Riddle me this and riddle me that. Ayuk's gonna end up wearing the gold dealer hat. <laughs> Just, uh, look, th- there are a couple teams. If we kick around the ten percent to thirteen percent likely, I don't care about Buffalo. I don't care about these other teams. He's gonna wear the golden black. Well, what would the offer be? Once he made the Tomlin, 
and he's going to wear the gold and black. Watch Khan perform magic. You know what? Let, let's Khan give Ron. Let's give Ron's team some props real quick, because as much as it's easy to say this isn't going to happen, okay, as much as it's easy to go Pittsburgh, how could they do this? They got Tom. Ron's right. Khan is a con man when it comes to maneuvers. And I really, really love what he's done with the Justin Fields maneuver. Um, Pickens is going to go to the moon this year. We were really worried about that with, with no quarterback. Then Russell Wilson came. We were kind of like excited about the potential prospect of Russell Wilson if this happened, if that. But now Fields is there. He's going to take the job. I fully, fully believe that. I love what Pittsburgh is doing right now. Ron should be very excited. This is not a year I bank against Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh is a real strong shot. Um, Ayuk does seem to want to maybe go to Pittsburgh by the one simple fact that he did, you know, poke at Pittsburgh, and that was that was a strange, you know, thing. That's what he potentially you know, would gravitate toward if it was up to him. Let's say he was granted a, a trade request, then he might go to Pittsburgh. You might, that would definitely be one of the teams saying Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Why Lamar? A lot of players want to play with Lamar. A lot of players want to play with Josh Allen. And I believe a lot of players want to play for Tomlin, even though, you know, people like Ron, who love his Steelers, but hates Tomlin, would say that Tomlin is very likable by a lot of players. And Fields is a very attractive. Fields and Russell together is a very attractive place because you know you're going to have a quarterback at least at one one point or another. To Ron's point, Khan being the one, I, I think Khan could be the one guy that can pull this trade off. Would it require the 20 overall pick? I think it would. And I don't know if you're okay with that, Ron, or would you rather have, what if Brian Thomas Jr. fell to 20? Or what if Brian Thomas Jr. fell to 16 or 17 and you can move up by giving up just a little bit of later draft capital my question would be, is 20 too high? Is 20 to, at the point where it's like, you got a free Brian Thomas Jr. or at least a Keon Coleman type of player? No, oh, I, I, I don't think so. I think even like if, if Jacksonville, even even if somebody were to uh, offer, if Jacksonville were to offer the 17, that's paying too high for Ayuk. I don't think they got to give up the 20. I don't think Khan would give up the 20. I think Khan would end up doing like a, a second round this year and maybe a third or second round next year, and he could pull it off. I don't know. I don't know, Ron. I don't, I don't think. Uh, I don't think the Niners would give him up unless it was an offer they couldn't refuse. And to me, that probably wouldn't be. I'm not saying it's impossible, but probably wouldn't be moving the needle. And they would just say, we'll take our chances that we get a, a deal worked out. And we'll, we'll push Ayuk to his limits. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, Ayuk could say whatever he wants. His leverage is small. Like his his leverage is tiny. His leverage is just creating a mess and, and a drama. That's they all his leverage is. Pick. They might swap pick. Um, that that know, I, that, that I could see. Pittsburgh their first round. They hey, that... Swap it. Okay, so so let me kick that around. Would you swap twenty and thirty one and give a, a twenty twenty five second? Yeah. I mean, there, there's creative ways fair. to maybe do that with a, with a swap I, of first fair. runners. So that way, that gives that gives San Francisco a little more clout, and if they want to get another rookie wide receiver or whatever, they're in a position to do so. I, could, I, I just don't think second rounders alone are going to do it because I think it's more worth it to them to say, let's call Ayuk's bluff. Let's let the draft, let's let, let him request a trade, make a fuss, unfollow us, uh, create bad Yelp reviews, whatever he's got to do to get all pissed off, right? He can tweet Tomlin, he can, he can text Tomlin, he can Snapchat Tomlin all he wants. But at the end of the day, we'll let him create his, his problem, right? And then let the NFL draft pass and all of his potential soft leverage is gone. And then we're going to call his bluff. And we're going to say, you here's your offer. You either get bank right now or you play it out, get hurt, and run the risk of getting nothing. $25 million a year, take it or leave it. He's like, I'm worth 27 And he ends up taking $25 million a year. Or he gets something that makes him feel good, like some incentives that help him feel like, okay, that $2 million per year that I'm not getting... I can get that if I, let's say, have this big, huge season. I believe I can do, then I'm okay. I believe incentives can solve almost all problems. So incentives will likely come to the rescue and get an IUK deal done. That's why I only put a 10 to 13% chance that IUK even gets traded. 
I, I put a high likelihood, 50% or more, that he requests some sort of trade, even if it's soft request or very low-key request through an interview, whatever. But the idea of him getting traded, 10 to 13%. Um, the idea of a team giving up big draft capital and having to pay him 20 seven million dollars a year which is what he probably get in a trade contract versus the Niners giving him 25.5 in an actual you know contract to, to keep him in house but I, I do yeah. think I do think that that second rounders will make the Niners say we're gonna call his bluff we don't care first rounder would say you know what we're far apart on this deal let's just take the first rounder that that's where I think the Niners are probably at they ask they ask way more than other teams bro they value everybody so high like, the Niners yeah. think they can get the world for a player, and if they don't, they don't trade them. That's kind of the way they look at it. The Nolanator in the chat makes a good point, I think. They need an offensive line to protect Purdy, to help out with uh, CMC. They do need that offensive line guy. And Pittsburgh right now is targeting that offensive line guy. There's only, like, three really good ones in the draft, and they're going to go way before San Francisco gets the pick. So, do they... Do they trade up? Would they trade? I, I really believe that that Khan is going to pull something off here and everybody's going to be in awe. But, yeah, I, I, you could be the perfect trade offering to get that offensive line guy, which they need desperately. Yeah, I, I think that I will say, Debo did it. Thank you, TM. Uh, I do believe that um, the Niners are in a position with the Brock Purdy deal looming. And I, to be honest with you, though, I think the likelihood of Brock Purdy getting number one quarterback money, even number two quarterback money, is not as great as people think. Let's revisit this uh, whole calendar year from today. I think this is a silly conversation when people are like, he's resetting the quarterback market. If, if, if Brock Purdy is the highest paid quarterback in the National Football League, I, I, f I feel like a guy just got out of a coma for three years and he's like, well, what's going on in the NFL? Who's good? Who's bad? And you tell me Brock Purdy's the, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL and reset the quarterback market, I'm going to feel like I missed a couple years. I, I must have just woke up from a coma. It, it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> so, But if they're going to do that, and I'm not putting it past the Niners to do that, but if the Niners gave him that, they don't have room for all this other stuff. Like, something does have to give. The, the salary cap is fake to a degree, but they also have some of the biggest contracts at different positions in the NFL. Like, they're paying guys bank. They they got some of the biggest high-paid players at different positions in the NFL. And at some point, yeah, you can't continue to do that. And to have Ayuk getting paid way more than Debo is going to... I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. I think it's going to be slightly above Debo because of inflation of contracts. But there's no way Ayuk is getting paid, in my opinion anywhere near what JJ's requesting and in his mind he feels he's that good that's why T Higgins if you if you guys have noticed T Higgins and the Bengals haven't reportedly negotiated since 2023 because this guy wants T Higgins top five wide receiver money and the Bengals are literally like okay well you know T we'll see you later your locker's over there um we're gonna lock you out of the facility we're gonna take away your 2025 access card enjoy the 2024 season and uh they just have no interest in giving him top five wide receiver money how high does he value himself Ayuk? does he accept that he's the top 10 wide receiver money wise if so they might get a deal done if he thinks he's getting 28 million a year and he's not going to budge from that that's when the trade doors will open how wide will the trade door be that i don't know i'm guessing 10 percent that means the likelihood of squeezing through there, opening it up, and getting through is hard to imagine, but it's possible. And yeah, the Steelers do need to be thrown in the mix because Ayuk has strategically said that's one place he wants to go. He said so in a tweet. He said so by tweeting Tomlin. And you can make fun of that all you want and say, Hey, it's many saying because he tweeted Tomlin. He wants to... What other things do we have to go on? Did he tweet other coaches? No. The, his, and people say, Smitty says he's going to go because his girlfriend says he's going to go. These are all adding up. Why is his girlfriend constantly saying he's gone? Why is he tweeting Tomlin? Why is he unfollowing 
the Niners on social media? Why is he putting poop emojis up on his Instagram the moment John Lynch ends his press conference and he puts a poop emoji up to speak to John Lynch's press conference? These are all adding up, people. He's not happy at all. And I don't blame him because if they want to pay him, they're just dangling the carrot in front of him and asking him to go work out. Go work out. You'll be fine. We got the contract waiting for you. Just don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. That's one reason these players want their contract now. It's not just greed. He doesn't want to go out there and work as hard as he wants to work this offseason and put his ACL at risk by cutting and, and grinding and putting uh, uh, putting a sled on his back and dragging that thing 100 yards across the field and risk of tearing a hamstring or an Achilles tear. Watching Achilles tears rapture the NFL. He doesn't want to go out there. He could just go out there and make one cut as Achilles could blow. He knows that. He doesn't want to go through that. He wants his contract. The Niners want to pay him, and yet they don't want to give it to him. Uh, let me go back over to, to Mile High Mike real quick, or My, Mile High Magic, I'm sorry. <laughs> what's up, Mile High? Mile yeah, High. Yeah, what's up, Smitty? Yo. <sighs> so just one, uh, one side note I had for you. I think... I've been following you for a long time. You've been right about a lot of things. I mean, you were right about Gibbs. I followed that and want to chip with it. But I think you're super wrong about Caleb, man. I think he's going to go off. Are you a Bear fan? No, absolutely not. Mile High Magic. I'm a fucking Broncos fan. Well, but I don't know. You could be a Bear fan as well, or you could what? be you yeah, could be a you could be a Caleb fan. You could I don't know who your college team is. I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of factors here. Is there some bias involved? That's all I'm trying to ask. Language. Yeah, it's a family show, bro. My bad. I was in the Navy too. Uh, you know, I'm a sailor. Okay, I okay. Me well, I'll try not to but 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 what 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 is is there something rooted like fandom here? Are you is that your college team? Do you, no, you, no. It's okay. just just watching the video, watching him okay. play, watching. Well, college I'm not right about everything, Mile High Magic, but I will say that there's so many red flags uh, present, and he's like going what? to he's going to the worst team. He could possibly go to in terms of developing quarterbacks. They have zero percentage uh, track record of of doing this. <laughs> they can't. They can't develop quarterbacks. They never have. And they're gonna what? Break the mold now with Shane Waldron. Shane Waldron is your wizard. You brought Shane Waldron in instead of Kingsbury. Instead of another court, especially Kingsbury, bro, who was his QB coach at USC. It was a match made in heaven. They, they they don't they don't go to bat to bring in Kingsbury. It was a preliminary interview. It was a fact finding interview. They had no interest in bringing him in. They bring in Shane Waldron to solve the 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 we can't develop a quarterback problem that's been there since the beginning of time. Shane Waldron is the guy coming in. This team crapped the bed on Fields. Fields did not fail. Fields is not bad. The Bears failed Fields, and Caleb is going into a horrible situation. Now, if they draft a Dunze or Neighbors somehow, maybe it's going to be a little bit better. I'll admit that. When it happens, if it happens, I'll admit that there's a lot more likelihood that, that Caleb can at least deliver production. Will he deliver wins? I don't know. But red flags, you ask? What red flags? They're all over the place, bro. Everyone's talking about the red flags. There's 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 handfuls. Like, where do I even begin? He's His quirky personality? He's got the O-line. He's got the weapons. He's got the O line. He's got everything he needs to succeed. I get it. The, the Bears and their their front office is great. And the coaching staff is great, but I believe Caleb can do it. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I, 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 I don't mind. Caleb's not a leader, and he didn't face tough competition in the pack. The pack twelve. He faced mediocre defensive competition. I mean, he jumped and cried into his mother's arms. He he he. Not he's all about himself. He's not a great teammate. He lacks leadership. He's gonna be a bust. Bro, bro, Caleb's not even in my top four quarterbacks in this rookie class. That's insane. Is it? So okay, so I just made an insane trade in, in Dynasty. I got you know Pickens, Charbonnet, and a 2025 second round. For the 101 this year. Picking. And you're saying I shouldn't spend that on Caleb? Bro, have you watched my show? You just said you watched my show. You love my content. I helped you win a championship. I was right about Gibbs. And I'm literally touting JD5 all offseason. And you literally just asked me, would I not spend it on Caleb? 
What are you talking about? What do you mean would I spend it on Caleb? I just told you Caleb's not my fourth. He's not even in my top five, my top four quarterbacks. And then you just you just actually asked me, should you spend the 1.1 1 .1 on Caleb? Like, bro. It's super I, flex. So you're saying I go JD5 over What do you Caleb think I've been, look, look at the Saturn men. The Saturn men. One small step for man, one giant man. You say you, you, you hold on, Denny. Denny, hold on, hold on, Denny. We're glad you're here, but hold on one oh, second. Man. You say you follow my content, Mile High Mike. That was one of the first Moonman, Marsman, Saturn Man I dropped to make sure that I got you all on the jump of this thing, because everyone and their mother was doubting JD Five. Now you have very knowledgeable people saying he's now the QB one, and that if the Bears were smart, they'd take JD Five, not Caleb Williams. And, and even if, even if, if I I'm, take JD Five, I'm gonna get laughed at. Okay. The, the, uh, who are you playing my, my with? My lead mates are going to roast me. Why? Do they not know ball? The one that's left. Are they casuals? I, I don't understand. He He's going to Washington, and he's going as the second drafted quarterback, and there's about, I would say, 30% of the scouting population that I respect anyway is already calling him the number one quarterback. So tell me how they're going to laugh at you. Do you you have more faith in, in the commanders organization and their front office and their coaching staff. <laughs> this guy this guy really? and my, Mile High Magic, I know I know I know you love the channel. I'm not trying to clown on you. You know you're my boy Blue. Don't take offense by this. But oh, you're man. you're you're asking me the same question over and over like I'm gonna change my mind. Like but are you sure you don't like Caleb's not my no, third no, I asked you quarterback. I asked you if you like JD. Bro. And then I asked you if you if you like the commander's front office. That's a different question. I know, but ask but ask me who my number two quarterback is. Do you even know? Do you, do you even watch the show? Drake May. No. You don't even watch the show, bro. You you you, you said you followed me. You said you followed me. You said you went to war with me. And I've done video after video after video. You don't even know who's on the Moon Man list, the Mars Man list, the Saturn Man list. No, yeah, I watched you last year, and I said you helped last me with year. kids. You helped me with a lot of players last okay. year. I haven't it's watched okay. much of your content this year. I'll right. be honest. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mile. It's early in the year. It's Look, early in the year. Magic, I love you, pal. I love you. I'm not mad at you. Uh, Penix Jr. Hey, Th that is my second ranked quarterback. Penix Jr. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my God! Quarterback, successful quarterback. I'm having hot flashes right now. I bet you. I bet you are. You're you're a Caleb drafter. Mile high. Who is the last the last quarterback that that Chicago has developed, drafted and developed? Who was the last good quarterback? They don't even have one. You can go all the way back to Jabisky when they took him first round. <laughs> But they they broke they broke fields. They they had they're they're very unsuccessful. So what makes you think Caleb and all his Hollywood drama is going to get there and things are going to change? I don't know. I'm from Hollywood. I don't put much uh, weight on that Hollywood drama stuff. He can paint his nails all he wants. <laughs> well, but touchdown. see, but see, there's the difference between whether you're liking Caleb or you don't like Caleb. A lot of people are going to have a problem with this guy walking into a, a locker room full of. Of veterans this isn't college football you know where everybody's just going to follow the quarterback and everybody's you know they, they they barely know life okay you're talking about walking into a locker room full of grown men that are going to eat you alive and he's going to walk in there and try and lead a locker room full of dogs and and he's going to be all over the place with his hollywood bs his constant you know need for attention that when a quarterback needs this kind of attention it never ends well bro that's red flag number one he requires attention and quarterbacks that want attention like him it's different when joe burrow's interviewed and they're coming to him and they ask joe burrow a question and he's sitting in his locker room and he isn't he doesn't go to the media he's not going to everybody they're coming to him and he's smoking a cigar and he says something sharp and funny, and everybody loves it. And people people made dumb comparisons of Joe Burrow and Caleb. It reminds me of Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, you're coming to Joe Burrow. Caleb's going to you. Caleb's going to you and telling you he wants his attention. Caleb is is absolutely red flag galore. Like the red flags here are through the roof. This guy's attention seeking 
and everything that he brings, it reminds me of uh, of, of what's his name, the quarterback for the Broncos that uh, failed. Um, I always say that they remind me of each other. All of them? No, the, but the I always 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 call him out. What's his name? Somebody help me. The guy on the on the oh, sideline. The guy on the sideline rapping. The guy, the guy on the sideline of the field. Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Drew Locke. Yeah, Drew, Drew Locke. Locke. Yeah. Drew Locke. Reminds me of Drew oh, Locke. Yeah, Drew Locke. The I'll moment I saw the moment I saw Drew Locke yeah. and the way he carried himself around the players, I said bust. Holy crap. What a bust. This guy's not going to lead men. Josh Rosen, another good example. Thank you. Josh Rosen, absolute garbage. You could see that coming from a mile away. I'm a Cardinal fan. I said, we're drafting uh, this clown, this attention-seeking clown. Yeah. Got to be out of your mind. Denny, you're live. Denny, en enough of this Caleb talk. Denny, what's up, Denny? Uh, all right. That's how I feel about it. Keep it, clean, keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Hold on. Hold on. Keep keep it clean. Keep it clean. It's a family show. Go. Go. Clean. All right. Oh, man. Uh, okay. So, if you had on uh, fantasy, uh, which we should care about, is uh, uh, fantasy. Oh, luck coming in hot. Uh, who's the other guy? Who's the guy? Uh, Sam Donald. Okay. How many How many we had, Denny? <laughs> How many? How many we at tonight? How many we at tonight? We can barely uh, understand you. No, 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 no. You know what? I, I went and saw my boy. You know what I mean? So no. it, I have that. I have that extra. Uh, how many I had? You know, <laughs> yeah. When I first saw Smitty, I think yeah, it was a thirty dollar drink. It but sounds you know like what? Denny fell asleep. And I never made it back. And I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey, De Denny, Denny, real quickly, ask your question. Uh, uh, I'm, um, we're losing you here. Uh, what's your question? What's your comment? I'm going to put you back on mute in a second, but what's your question? Hit me with something real oh. quick. Ooh, uh, I think Craig May is coming in. Uh, and Trent sorry. Green. All right. I'm, All right. I'm on Craig May. This is a big Trent ball, Green. All right. And it it. That's what I like. I like great men. And I want him on Someone wants to know. Denny, someone wants to know if you're speaking Spanish right now. They they really are truly asking. <laughs> they don't know what uh, you're saying. And, and, uh, uh, see, uh, see, uh, 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 Denny, no, no, Denny, I got no, no, call back. No, no. I, I got to let you go. We can't understand what you're saying. We appreciate you, Denny. Why? Why? It's no, a, I thought you were my boys, man. You are my you boy, but. Okay, okay, mute yourself. Mute yourself. Just mute yourself. We'll come back and see if we got a more I'll clear connection with you. All right, I'll mute myself. All right, mute All right. yourself. I'll mute myself. All right, don't make me, don't make me hang up, though. Don't make me hang up, though. Really mute it so I can keep you on the line. I want to keep you there. Let me go to no. Tyler real All quick. Right. Tyler, you're live. Right. Just want to personally thank you for all that you've done. JD5 is going to run circles. Those who believe in Caleb are more of Homer fans. And who's the guy that played for the Browns before Deshaun Watson. Now he's in the D-League. Uh, how many how, how many quarterbacks can I name? <laughs> it was right before everybody thought he was going to be like the next Alex Smith. He ended up Johnny being football? drafted to the Browns before Yeah, yeah Johnny Deshaun. Football. You talking about Johnny Football? Yeah, Johnny yeah, Football. Manziel, yeah, yeah, Manziel, Manziel and like Caleb. Was... Yeah, they're, they're very similar. Yeah, Manziel and Caleb. Caleb Williams is going to be after one year. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the fear, I think, is probably, probably the best example, Tyler, out of all the examples we're throwing out, is best to just go straight to Johnny Football. I mean, Johnny Football was arguably the best college football player at the quarterback position of all time. Like, it's hard for people to admit that because he was so bad when he got into the NFL, but it's true. And Caleb Williams has been toted as the best football player because he's been proven, like he's been like saying, "Oh, he's the next Mahomes. He's going to be the next that." Wait till he plays against NFL caliber now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till he plays against. And, and, and I'm not Brad. saying that. And I'm not saying that Caleb can't. And let me just be very clear. I'm not saying that Caleb can't come out and let's say he drafts. Let's say they draft him. In a Dunze or neighbors somehow, and I'm a, I'm a little fearful that a Dunze falls to nine. I really think he's gonna. There's like a big chance of that. 
there's still going to be fantasy potential. Like Caleb, can, he's got a cannon. Like I want to make it abundantly clear that just because you have like a lot of skills physically doesn't mean you're going to translate at the NFL level. You know, Ryan Leaf, like you could go through a number of examples. So having a cannon does not mean that he's going to completely bust, nor do I think he's going to absolutely bust to the degree of a few of those names we've said that are out of the league in a year. I think he could linger for a while, but when we when we say bust, we're saying bust from the expectation level. Like Fields busted in, in Chicago. Do I think that Caleb can play every bit as good as Fields did in Chicago? I think the answer is yes. Like, that's enough to linger. It's enough to go into the next year. It's enough to create DJ Moore into a top 10 wide receiver. So could DJ Moore or Keenan Allen or Adunze thrive under Caleb? It's possible. Like, he's got a cannon. But will they win games? Will it work out? Will they be moving on from this project like they moved on from Fields four years from now? Like that, that's, that's what I'm, that's what I see for Caleb. It's not that I think Caleb walks in and they just like spit him back out and he, he plays four games and never plays again. I'm not predicting that kind of bust. I'm predicting somebody that is nowhere near the expectation level that people have for him. And he might linger enough. He might be good enough physically to linger for a few years. And when you make an investment in a first round player, very rarely do you walk away very fast. So it's going to take a while. But, but again, the, the bigger crutch here is that this team is historically horrible at developing quarterbacks, and they brought in Shane Waldron as the wizard maker. This is the kingmaker. Like, I'm not saying Waldron's horrible, but this isn't the guy you bring in for the most complicated job in the history of, of planet Earth. This is like bringing in a very good high school teacher, one of the best high school math teachers there is, into Harvard into Harvard to teach a bunch of rocket scientists. That's what I'm saying. I don't hate Waldron. Waldron's the best math teacher I've ever seen. But he's a math teacher at high school. Yeah. And the question is not You're about out of control, You're out of and it's not about more. The qu main question is about Caleb. How good is, it? is Caleb going to perform? But not how good is no, more going to make not, Caleb. Okay, but Caleb, Caleb going to the Washington Commanders under the tutelage of, let's say, Kingsbury, his coach from USC, his QB coach last season, not two seasons ago, three, his last year, Kingsbury was there with Caleb at the quarterback position coaching him. If Caleb was to go to Washington, I would have more hope. I don't know that he'd fit the expectation that everybody's building for him, but he would be a much better, more likely to succeed quarterback. Maybe he's Jared Goff and he plays that well for the, the, the remainder of his career, but he's not this generational talent no matter where he goes. And his only shot would be with Kingsbury, who knows him, could reel him in and, and tweak everything to a certain degree and get him on track. He's going to Chicago. Where the defense is, a couple players have already come out saying, you better not bring that Hollywood crap into the locker room. And they've gone on to say, we'll support him, whatever, we'll challenge him. But they said things like, we'll challenge him and his weaknesses need to become his strengths. I just wonder if this is going to, there's going to be riffs and all kinds of drama from the onset. And I've already made another prediction. The moment, right now he's on his best behavior. <laughs> he's, you're probably seeing the most professional version of Caleb right now the moment he's actually inked the deal and he, he's it's in, irrevocable he's in Chicago I believe he starts becoming a little bit more uh media driven and, and desires the attention and the spotlight and and this guy's going to become he's he's growing up on social media you know you there, there's two different types of people in the world right now people everybody's grown up on social media that's that's 18 19 20 21 years old right They've grown up on it. So you're either somebody that can handle it professionally or not. And I believe Caleb's the other the other the other group. I think this guy's gonna be a mess on social media. I think he's gonna be a mess. Totally because the Washington coach knows who he is, knows his personality, knows how to how he operates because he's already been with them day after day after day. Perps alert. Super chat alert. I'm gonna deal with you. 
Let me per in. All right. Per in. Perps, hold on. Perps, thank you for dropping dropping the 20 gifted memberships. If you got a, a membership yeah. from Perps, give them a thank you. A uh, eggplant emoji, a fire emoji, mm -hmm. a flexing uh, emoji, nice. whatever. Uh, history with Peters and JD5. So uh, TH says, Commanders, history with Peters and JD5. The, 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 the Adam Peters GM move by the Washington Commanders, for for a mile high who's in here that alone should make you realize that in a dynasty super flex jd5 is going to be surrounded by the best talent he possibly could be surrounded by why because adam peters is a magician he's arguably the number two gm in the entire national football league right away in his first uh his first uh uh gig because he's been quietly doing that for the niners for a decade kittle Brock Purdy, this Adam Peters knows what the hell he's doing, and JD5 is going to the moon. San Francisco. All right, let go. me get. Let me get. Thank Smitty, you. let me get. Go ahead. All right, Smitty. Smitty. Well, you you know I, I'm going to draft JD5 on 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 faith because you helped oh, me with yeah. Gibbs last year. You helped me with a couple different players. I will draft him on faith and hope that you are correct and forget Caleb. Hey, right. hey, hey, Mile High. Can you do me a favor though? Can you wait? And, can you wait until yeah. let Lenny? Can you wait, De Denny? You're super loud. Okay, I apologize. Okay, please mute. Well, please, please, please mute, Denny. Please okay, mute, or three. I'm gonna hang up on you. I'm gonna hang up on you. Please mute. Okay. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. Then put it on mute. Don't hang up on put me. Put it on mute, Man. Denny. Listen to me. It's like talking to my three-year-old. Oh, you're gonna make you. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Class. Daddy. What's uh, up, Daddy? Are you muted, Daddy? If I hear uh, you answer, you're not you muted. I'm losing control of my own show. Daddy, I'm going to hang up on you. Call back. Call back. You're not listening. Shut up. You're not listening. My, my, he's, he's got. Finish him. Okay. De uh, mile high. Listen to what I'm saying. If you can wait, if you can wait until after the draft, obviously wait and let's see where the landing spots are. We're not even 100% guaranteed JD5 goes to the Washington Commanders, so we gotta wait and see. Okay. Number two, you could trade down one draft slot. If everybody's gonna laugh at you, why not take advantage of the draft capital, bro? Why not move down one draft slot? Because the guy, the guy at number two is a total club. He doesn't make any trades. He doesn't want to do anything. Well, is the guy number two going to take JD5? More than likely, I would assume so. But you just said everyone's going to laugh at you. If I you mean, unless him. he takes Marvin Harrison, but it's super quick. Yeah, but you know what? Who, who are your quarterbacks? Because I'm not much of a person that, that worries uh, I too have, much. Uh, I have uh, T-Law, Russell Wilson, and Oof. Will Levis. Oof. Okay, yeah, you, prob you probably do need yeah, to look at it. But I'm still a person, if you ask me what my Superflex rankings are, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is my by far 1.1. I don't care about quarterbacks. And I mean, my, my but, RBs, my tight ends, and my wide receivers yeah. are all locked in. So okay. I really just need a QB. Right, right. But unfortunately for people that didn't for people that didn't build or don't build the way that I build the Superflex, you got to kind of resort to quarterback. But I'm just letting you know. Who's got that massive background noise? Is that mile high? I hear just, it sounds like a vacuum. That's not me. I don't know what that is, but it sounds who like is that? By who is that? Is it Denny? I'm is sorry, it Young? No. Is it Ron? It, I'm, it's back, man. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Okay, but I'm what is that sound? Off. It sounds like there's like a, a high vacuum sound in the background. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. It's gone. Jenny's in the bed. I bet you Denny's in Okay, Calvin Krim. Hey, Smitty. Huge Washington fan here. Where do we stack Cliff's offense if it uh, ends up being JD5, Brian Robinson, Eckler, Ayuk, McLaurin, Dodson, Ertz? I'd put that offense in the top 12. You know, with potential for more. But you you get JD5, you've got you've got Ayuk, you've got Eckler. Even though Eckler's got a lot to prove, he's still a nice prospect for a lot of people so I, I would go ahead and say that would be an elite elite potential setup bro uh, this is a there's only one better gm and he might not even be better we got to give adam peters a year or two before we make the determination but it's nick casario in houston and i've said that for over two years now this guy i've said that for well over two years because this is the man that orchestrated the what is that noise not me i swear to god okay not me. I swear Ron, to god. Uh, i've been on mute okay <laughs> 
Mile high, mute. Uh, it, it's not mile high magic. I've been on mute. Okay, mile high, mute yourself real quick. Young, mute yourself real quick. Young, mute yourself. Yeah, mute, mute, mute yourself. Mark Everybody yourself. mute themselves right now. No, I mute, mute. Let me hang up on Denny and see if that fixes it. Mile high is muted. It goes away. As soon as I as soon as I delete Denny, it goes away. Denny, you're not muting yourself. That's the last chance you get. That's it's the Denny. last chance you get, Denny. Uh, let me get this caller on here. Hold on. Uh, f- five two three caller five two three. Who is this? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Five two three. What's your name? Hey, uh, this is Alpha. Uh, been watching your show, Smitty. Alpha is a Patriot fan that sometimes comments in your videos. I don't know if you remember. Okay. Uh, what's up, Alpha Pats fan? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I just wanted to tune in and talk to you about fantasy and whatever. Uh, watch your show. I think it's pretty entertaining. And yeah, so we just wanted to talk a little bit. Okay, it, real quickly, Alpha, one second. Denny, mute yourself because we can hear the background noise or I'm going to hang up on you every time. So please actually mute the phone. Oh, it's a, yes, it's okay, a. Yeah. it sounds like a vacuum going on in the background of my show, and you're not <laughs> muting, and we're asking you to mute. This is your last. This is my last request for Bro, you, this Denny. Is, this is hilarious right now. <laughs> no show for you for a week if you don't follow instruction here and mute yourself until you're on, on deck. So hang hang tight. Thank you. I, I don't hear it. Denny, Denny, Denny listen. Denny, Denny, Denny listen. Denny. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Alpha. I'm sorry. Denny, are the aliens? No, no, don't ask him a don't ask him a question. Don't ask him a question, Alpha. You you direct all your questions to me. We don't need him to unmute. What can I help you with, Alpha? Um, I, I didn't really have a question in mind. Like, I just wanted to like call in and talk about fantasy. I mean, um, I think it's pretty interesting. Like your concept of the show about the thing you do about the Saturn man, the Moon man. I think that's pretty cool. And I, I didn't really see that before. Like, this is the first time I've seen this. I think it's pretty cool that you do that. And you're a very entertaining YouTuber. I just wanted to say that. Maybe. Thank you, Alpha. People are stealing it left and right, uh, but that's okay. Uh, we're still doing it. We're unique. No one's going to steal what we do. No one does what we do the way we do it, and we're going to continue to grow. So tell your friends. Tell as many people as you can. And if you don't want to tell your close buddies in your league, you can tell somebody in an elevator that's sitting there in a Caleb Williams jersey. Yeah. You can say, hey, psst. I, the show I know loves I Caleb. Twitter, you should. I use, should I use Twitter a lot, so I have a decent following. I'm not a huge account. I have like 700 followers. Okay, send so it I out. guess I could plug you in there. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. Like, hey, yeah. Maybe he's an awesome YouTuber. Thank you, pal. Well, put the YouTube. Check him out. Yeah, put the YouTube link and just drop it in and see what happens. Thank you, pal. Appreciate you. All right, oh, yeah, hey, man. if you got a question, chime in in a second. Let me roll back over to Young. Young, do you have anything you want to add? Denny, I'm going to come to you in a minute. Stay muted, please. You're doing a great job. Good good job, Denny. Okay, go ahead, Young. Nothing right now, Smitty. I'm just, I'm just hanging out, man. Appreciate it. Okay, you. now, Denny, I'm going to let you unmute real quick. You can ask whatever you want, say whatever you want, but I need you to mute again when you're done, okay? Please, or I'll hang up on you because it's too loud. What can I help you with, Denny? We would love to hear from you, buddy old pal. You're on mute, bra. <laughs> he doesn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> he doesn't know how to turn. He doesn't know how to turn mute on, and he doesn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> it's on, he's on a rotary phone. <laughs> you can't keep a good har- uh, a good jar head down. Yeah, hold on. Let's go over to. We got the uh, we got the Bruce on the phone. Uh, the Bruce is loose, Brucey. What is going on, my good buddy, my good pal, Brucey? <clears throat> what can we do for you, pal? Not much. How about you, Smitty? Oh. I have a question. Yeah. Who do you think is more likely to get traded, T. Higgins or IU? T. Higgins. Uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't mean both. Both could happen. Both might not happen. Who the hell knows? The reason I say that is because the Niners are very much actively in their mind. This is their their active way is the Niner way of waiting. But they very much are are considering and planning to bring Ayuk in, whereas we have heard anyway that the the Bengals and Higgins haven't even talked contract in a long, long time. They franchise tagged him. 
the odds of him being traded on the tag are greater than the odds of trading Ayuk on, on his fifth year option. Um, a big reason for that is because you know we clearly know that that the Niners are 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 their objective is to bring Ayuk back, and Higgins is just a little bit more replaceable. And and if the if the nine and that doesn't mean both can't ink deals though doesn't mean both can't get traded doesn't mean either will get traded. Um, some people have even said, "What if they traded the two of them?" You're not going to get that done because at the end of the day, it comes down to it's more about money. I think these teams, if they get out of the Ayuk and Higgins game, it's to save money. It's to get a rookie wide receiver. It's to start over. There's no objective of getting a, an expensive piece. You know, like oh, people are like, "What if the, you know, Bengals, you know, did this or that?" The only thing that would change is if the Niner, if the if the Bengals brought in JJ somehow. You know, that, then I could see them it being worth it to them. But even that is a pipe dream more than anything else. Um, but but I would say Higgins what slightly. Of, uh, what do you think if, and this is a big if, what if they just decided, okay, you want to go and you want to go, and they just swap receivers? But, I, yeah, I just said that. There, there's no way they would do that because why would you do that? Like why would you bring why why would you bring in a disgruntled Higgins who you don't want to pay for replacing a disgruntled Ayuk who fits the team and you know what I mean? There's just no way. Higgins is demanding the same contract. It's it's not it's not any different. Not to mention, like, there's no way the Bengals want an Ayuk that's not on a long term deal if they trade for him. You know, so there's 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 no chance there. The zero. That's just a pipe dream. That's that's it's fairy dust. Okay, but it's it's fun to talk about. I, I admit, um, uh, Denny, take a lap. Says uh, Jonathan Cobble. Denny, are you there? Take four laps. Denny, I think he fell asleep. I think he passed out, but he passed out on mute. Thank God. Uh, let's go Which over. Sorry for the best. Let's go over to Alpha. Alpha. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, pal, or ask? Um, yeah. We can barely we can barely hear you. It sounds like you're on you're on Denny's connection. What would you say? Oh shit, my bad. Uh, can you hear me? A little bit. Hey. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was asking. I'm, I know that you have a Drake London. Uh, your marksman, Drake, right? He's Drake marksman? Drake London. Okay. Yeah, Drake London. Yes. Yeah, Drake London. You say Marsman, right? Well, I mean, he he is he is sitting on the Marsman list. I'll show you the Marsman list right now, and I'll explain. He's on a shuttle to Mars. Marsman. Some of these guys are climbing into territories like London, where they're no longer where they were. So when he hit the Marsman list, he was nowhere in the second round. Um, and so, like at some point, I'll come up with little ribbons or like you know, mission completed. You know, good luck to everybody that got him at the value when we t we touted him. But he's certainly climbing into a territory now, in the middle of round two, top of round two sometimes, that is yeah, not he, he, as he right now yeah, the, right? it's not he's as better. it's not as advantageous anymore. But it doesn't mean I'm going to take him off like as if we didn't you know call a good call at the time. So I'll I'll figure out a way of identifying that because I think some people will look at the especially at the end of the year they're like. Like Brees Hall, um, you know, at the end of the year, everyone's like, well, of course he's good, you know, like the, like last year, you know, and, and like he was doubted. Him and Gibbs were doubted so much all year. Mid-season, I got like hate mail to the rafters on Jameer Gibbs. You told me to take Gibbs in the third round. I'm never watching your channel again. Unfollow. And then, you know, week 12, I see him. Hey, Smitty, what's going on? <laughs> it's Steve. Yeah, you, you crushed that prediction last year about Jameer Gibbs, I remember. Yeah, I mean, we, I wasn't really drafting him last year. I was more of a David Montgomery guy because I knew he was going to steal clutches. Yeah, but, we could, we yeah, could, like, yeah. I, I got you. I, I kind of hear you, but you're breaking up. So I'm going to drop you for now. Call back and we'll see if there's a better connection. Um, I kind of made out what you were saying, but it's getting a little fuzzy. Uh, let, let, let me uh, let me get on over to, let me circle off around the phone line and we're going to potentially uh, wrap up the phone line. Here, um, Young, any final thoughts, bro? 
Hey, no final thoughts, man. I've just been just been getting entertained from <laughs> from this little phone line. All right, man. Uh, episode two. It was a classic, a classic Smitty right now. All classic right. Fantasy appreciate football show. Love it. Appreciate you later, bro. Uh, let's go to Denny real quick. Denny, any final thoughts? That's a good point, Denny. Uh-huh. All right, we'll come back to you, Bruce. Any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, my my question is, I have an actual question. What if the Falcons draft the receiver and they signed all them receivers? What would that do? Um, if who signed what? If the Falcons draft the receiver, but they signed all the ones in the offseason, and they have one. Uh. I'm sorry. I was I was I was reading this real quick. Plan on hanging around this channel. We got to clean that up. Hold on. Cobble says, "Smitty, say the noble." Cobble, Co- Cobble, Jonathan Cobble. Motion detected. At the okay, Cobble. I guess I'm saying his name wrong. Cobble. I say Cobble. So Cobble, Cobble, Co, like company, like Cobble. Okay, I'll try to remember that. I'm sorry. I promise. Last time you got to repeat yourself. Say it one more time. I'll write it down. Go ahead, Bruce. <laughs> All right. What if the Falcons draft like Falcons. a Dunze, but they sign like all the other receivers in the offseason? What does that do for like all the other ones? Does that just say, we just signed you in case injury happens? I don't know. I mean, if anybody that brings in, are you worried about Dunze's value? Is that what you're trying to say? Like, what do I do with the Dunze if, he, if he's in a crowded room and they don't want to use him or something? Is that what you're trying to insinuate? Because the Dunes say any receiving yeah, like, any receiving gets- room he goes to, he's the number one wide receiver. And let me let me make something abundantly clear. Look at this Mars Man list. He's on a shuttle to see Mars. London on there. Mars Man. Look at my Moon Man. Yeah. The Moon Man. A Dunze. They're both on the list. Space. The, they're both on these lists. It, the, the Mars Man doesn't mean that that London's better necessarily. In fact, I might even put a Dunze on the Mars Man list because I believe he needs to be there. But this guy is so good. This guy, a Dunze, if he ends up landing in Atlanta, he's the number one wide receiver, not Drake London, in my opinion, for the future. They could be like Nico and Dell, though, where it's like it feels 1B, 1B for a while. No one's 1A. It's 1B, 1B. And they just both continue to kind of rotate. But Adunze, to me, has the ability, not that London doesn't have the ability to be top five, but Adunze, to me, has the ability to be one to five. This is maybe a Jamar Chase of this draft class. And so it doesn't mean London's bad. It, it, London's on this list for a reason. He's They're both that good. I think what you probably say is that if, if, if Adunze lands in Atlanta, Kirk Cousins needs to be upgraded massively. Because he's got more weapons than he's ever had before, because he might have had yeah he might have had he might have had Hawkinson and he, and he had uh, uh, Addison and KJ Osborne as Ron would say and and JJ, but you could make an argument that Adunze, London, Kyle Pitts, and Bijan is maybe even a touch better. It's just spread out and balanced differently. But Bijan's one of the better receiving backs in the National Football League, if not the best, in my opinion. And he rivals wide receivers in terms of value to a quarterback and will. So we'll see what happens. But Adunze to Atlanta would would be interesting. It certainly wouldn't be something that I'm totally rooting for because I, I don't know that I want Drake London to get neutralized a little bit, and he would. But I also don't want a Dunze in Chicago. So I'd rather him be in Atlanta and have that Nico Dell problem than have him in Chicago and worry about Chicago constantly rotating quarterbacks over the next 12 years. Okay. All right. All right, All right Bruce. You, later, Bruce. All right, let's check on Denny. Denny, Thanks. you got anything else you want to add to that? All right. Uh, Mile High Magic, final thoughts. And again, bro, I can't emphasize enough. Wait until after the draft before you make any determinations. I would be tempted to trade down if I were you. I know you say you can't. If you're telling me the guy at two is taking JD5, it makes no sense what you... Huh? That was my wife, sorry. Oh, it makes no sense that, that you would get laughed at if you took... 
JD5 one if the guy at two is most likely taking JD5? You know what I'm saying? How can you get laughed at when you just have the number two guy as your number one guy? Like, so that part I don't get. Number two, though, uh, my second point is that if you can yeah, trade... I, I put a super chat that has my whole uh, roster in it if you want to take a look. I just oh. wanted to make sure that JD5 makes sense with that. Okay, let me, let me look at it. But also, my point would be, thank you for the super chat. I just saw it. Uh, my other point would be this. I would say that I'm the kind of guy that if I feel like JD5 is being doubted hardcore in this draft, I would trade down to three. And if your worst case scenario is you get your guy Caleb, which you won't, right? Because the whole world thinks he's... Not the whole world, but a lot of people think he's great. I think a lot of fantasy worlds don't like love him over JD5, though, bro. Like, my, my I mean, guess... I think he's great because I listen to a lot of other fantasy shows and everybody's fucking tout Sorry, touting him. Freaking touting him. So... All, all I'm going to say is, I mean, I, A, those those shows I would question if they don't see that JD5 is better. J, J, yeah, J, JD5 is going to climb, I believe, into about 70% of all fantasy football quarterback one rankings. I think he'll be the he'll be more of the consensus one fantasy football quarterback in rookie drafts by the time you're drafting. Um, and if you think I'm crazy on that, just look at Penix Jr. rising. Penix Jr. was thought to be not even a first rounder. Penix Jr. has been my second quarterback behind JD5 since January. And I've been taking heat for that ever since. But he's been climbing and climbing and climbing. And people are coming around. And there are many scouts that say he's the second best quarterback in the draft. Robert Griffin the third just said, and you could say that you don't trust him, whatever, but he just said that he's the most, he's got the most elite arm out of everybody in the draft class. Penix Jr. is proven. He's had two years of being healthy. He's he's the most uh, uh, articulate and and well spoken of the all the quarterbacks. He can command a room. He can command a huddle. He can command uh, 50 plus men. And and I think that uh, that Penix Jr. lands in an elite spot like Minnesota where he's throwing to freaking JJ, or he lands in Las Vegas where he's throwing to freaking Brandon Ayuk in a in a Pierce offense that's all about the you know the camaraderie and just you know this, this Penix Jr. would thrive in either of those locations. And I do believe that Penix Jr. Brandon. is in Minnesota or in Las Vegas. He's going to be in Minnesota or Las Vegas. He's going to be a much better option than Caleb Williams. So I'm actually not scared to trade down to three. And if Caleb goes and JD5 goes, you've got a dilemma to where, yeah, you do need a quarterback, bro. I'm not saying you don't. You can maybe trade for Fields on the on the speculation that he becomes some player that absolutely surprises everybody and you figure out your quarterback room another way. But I wouldn't be scared to have the idea that JD5 falls to three or worst case scenario, you get Marvin Harrison Jr. or Penix Jr. So that, that would be my advice to you, bro is you could get so much draft capital. Maybe you get your quarterback in that move down. Maybe the number three overall guy might ironically have Justin Fields and some other draft uh, player you could throw into the mix and maybe move down. You need more than that because Fields is like a throw-in. But I'm saying get crafty. Get crafty. Maybe you can upgrade a, a Joe Mixon into a Devon Achan. Maybe you can upgrade a, a wide receiver that you like, that everybody likes, and you can upgrade them into a, a, a freaking... Uh, you know, St. Brown. Like, I, I know you said... Okay, your team's right here. I'm sorry. Your team's right here. QBs, T-Law, Russell Wilson. Running backs are Gibbs, Brees, Alave, Flowers, Godwin, Kittle, uh, Flexes, uh, Rasheed Rice, Pierce. So you got some ability to maneuver the wide... I, I, you could upgrade those wide receivers. I don't hate them. You could upgrade Kittle. I don't hate Kittle, but he's older. Uh, Rasheed Rice, I would, I would throw in the deals and, and get deals done. I love your running back room. But if I could take, like, Alave and upgrade him into a... a borderline round one wide receiver or if I could take flowers and turn him into a uh I don't know into a draft pick that gets you a dunze or something like that like I, I if you could do this move down like let's say somebody's got the three and the six I don't know if anybody in your draft has the number three pick and the six or the number two pick and the five or two picks that you could literally get Bowers or a dunze by moving down from Caleb to get JD5 You there? Mike? Or Mike? He's not Mike. Mile High Magic. You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I hear you. I hear you. I, I was looking to see where the picks were in the draft. 
Yeah. Um, it looks like the guy that is the fluff has most of them. He just absorbed all the picks. The guy that has the four? No, the guy the guy that has all the picks, he's a flub. He doesn't want to trade. He just wants to sit there and pick all these rookies. Okay. Well, I mean, I'd at least try, bro. Maybe no, that's he... just how it goes. I, I mean, yeah. I, I just take the 101 and I draft JD5 and call it a day. Well, let it all play out. When's your draft? Uh, let's see. Draft is in 23 days, so just after the rookie Okay, draft. so I, I, I believe that you will be hearing so much JD5 content, especially from me, that that is going to make you feel a lot more comfortable with that selection. But for, but but most of all, bro, don't go off what I think. Like uh, you know, listen to what I'm saying, and if it, if it makes sense with with your opinion and it, it sways you because you actually believe it, then draft him. But if you actually think Caleb's better than JD yeah, five, no, I... and you draft JD five, what are you doing? Do what you feel is right. I can't draft for you. And what if JD five tears his ACL? And, he, and he's out for the entire 2024 season. His career gets off track. I can't control any of that. You need to take who you believe to be the number one. But I believe that it won't be a laughing yeah, no, matter. I definitely am. I'm thinking for myself, but I put a lot of your your opinion in the in the weight because you were right about a lot of people that I wasn't looking at. And I said, oh, shit, maybe I should draft Gibbs. Caleb feels like a bus, bro. All right. Hey, Mile High, appreciate your super chat. Appreciate you. And call in any time. I'll be live later All tonight. Right, take it easy. All right, later. Uh, Ron, any final thoughts? Yeah. Are you predicting Ayuk is going to Vegas? Um, Am I predicting Ayuk is going to Vegas? Yeah, because when you were talking about Penix, you said if Penix goes to Vegas and starts throwing to Ayuk. Did I I'm say like, that? Whoa. Did I say that? Yes, you did. Um, you sure did. Maybe he is. I mean, future Smitty might have taken over the control of the screen for a second. Oh, my gosh. Future Smitty's here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Why, hello. Whatever you do, whatever you do, the Raiders. Um, I don't know. I I, I think the, Ra the Raiders are going to get aggressive. The Raiders are either going to trade up for... Penix Jr. or draft him or the Vikings will get Penix Jr. Bo Nix is certainly in the mix uh, for both those teams as well. I hope it's Penix Jr. to the Vikings. That is a good fit, man. Penix Jr. is going to throw missiles to JJ. Th then we're going to have Perps who's going to be happy and then he won't be so you know, he won't be regretful at all over, you know, Cousins leaving. Maybe if that happens Herbs will actually come in, and, and um, um, if that happens, maybe he will decide to finally, finally take over the all-time donation record. Maybe. I hope so, because somebody needs to do it, and it's got to be Perps. I'm waiting for Perps to do it. Well, no pressure to anybody. Ron has the highest super chat in the history of the channel. Where's my... Where's my unicorn button? I know I have it here somewhere. I moved it and then I don't recognize where I moved it. And so here it is. He is a unicorn. I don't have it on here. I need to fix that. So uh, yeah, Ron Navy has the highest super chat of all time. The second highest high is Garrett with 600 bills. Garrett came in strong with that one. But Ron Navy, highest super chat of all time is... Let me fix this up. Highest super chat all time. Ron Navy, 765, right, Ron? 765. Absolute monster. So these are the two highest super chats of all time. Um, where's Christopher Smith been, by the way? Ron, you there? Hello? Oh, yeah. Oh. I accidentally hit the mute. So. Oops. You got my beat -a ball on there. beat -a ball <laughs> beat -a ball beat -a ball All right, Ron. Hashtag beat -a ball I'll see you uh, on tonight's show. I'm going to I'm gonna have maybe one or two other videos drop tonight. There's a lot to talk about. 
Um, I might do one as an upload. I'm not sure, but we'll see. All right. You're gonna do a. You're gonna do a, a dynasty. We need. We need to. No. 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 Are you gonna do? A, a, what do you call them when you make the videos? Uh, uh, and then you Premier. come into the chat. Premiere. Really. Premiere. Yeah. Yeah. Word I was looking for. Premiere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll see Perfect. you in a, in a bit. We'll be live tonight. All right. Later on. <laughs> Perp said, Perp said, easy there, bum bed brother. It's definitely Ron Mandy territory. I can't match that. Yeah. I don't have to. Oh, bull crap. You're, you're talking. You, that, that's a bunch of bull, Perps. You can do it anytime you want. And I'm waiting for you to do it. So take the challenge. Maybe you guys can push the bunk beds together and, and join forces for the biggest super chat in, in a, a joint effort ever. <laughs> All right. All right, Ron. Appreciate you. Later. Later. Uh, live premiere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hopefully, my wife doesn't see your message. Um, <laughs> I you to where, says the bolt. Um, nowhere yet, but I mean, I, again, it's probably a 10 to... 10 to 13 percent chance that he could get traded that's not a super high number but it's significant enough and it's rooted in that they're 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 not going to be able to close the gap contract wise and that's rooted in waiting and not giving Ayuk his contract now and allowing Devontae Smith to maybe get his deal JJ uh you know or T Higgins surprisingly just gets a deal all of a sudden you can't you can't you can't rule out that the Bengals would just out of nowhere give T Higgins a contract like that could happen easily we'd be shocked a little bit and then not all right I see you all later underdog fantasy promo code Smitty soon we'll be drafting like pretty much every other night or every night on on the channel right now we haven't been because a lot of people aren't in draft mode as much right now but you should be and you could do a bunch of these drafts together in fact I can drop a link right now to a, a private 12 person draft. Let me do that. Or we can all jump in together and join a league. So here if you want to be in a league with me, the prizes will be smaller cuz you know, you're 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 joining with 12 people, right? So understand that, but man, it, it's certainly fun to jump into a draft together. So let me go ahead and click on uh let's see here. Let me go ahead and click and create a, a private little draft. NFL. Uh, we'll do a three. We'll do a three dollar. Let's do a four dollar. Four dollar, twelve person draft. Prizes are about 40, 50 bucks or whatever. Um, but it's fun to do these little drafts together. So here is the link. I'm going to copy the link right now. Drop it in the live chat. And if anybody wants to join this draft with me, I'm going to be in it. It's a slow draft, obviously. And we can all jump in together and it'll be fun to keep track of, of it over the, the year. You can even, you know, call it out and say, Smitty, uh, I'm beating you in the in the, the private draft. Uh, Mile High became a loyal member, by the way. Mile High to the moon. There you go, pal. Appreciate you, Mile High, for becoming a member. Here's the draft link. Dropping it now. Boom. Link has been dropped. That link will also insert code Smitty for you, and they'll double up to $100 in your first deposit. So hit that draft link now. Join the draft with me. Boom. I Sorry, I just dropped it right now. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Hit the link. Do it live. Smash it. Let me see how many people are joining this draft. 11 more starts, so no one's clicked it yet. The, the link's right there. There's about a 10-second YouTube delay, so you should all be getting it right now. Jump in as soon as it fills, it'll begin and it'll be a slow eight hour timer draft. Appreciate you all. Nine more to start. Two people, three people jumped in. Eight more to start. Eight more to start. What is the promo code Smitty? But this link will insert it for you, but the promo code is Smitty. Tebow, just enter in Smitty. S M I T T Y. Enter it, code Smitty Tebow. Let me know if you did it, Tebow. Six more to begin. That link will insert code Smitty for you if you haven't downloaded the app yet. But hit code Smitty. It'll double your it'll up to a hundred dollars in your first deposit on Underdog. That means you could drop a hundred and uh, they can match up to one hundred. 
do it live. Uh, six more to begin the draft. Signing up now, says Hector. Hit that link. Use code SMITTY. It'll ask you, how did you hear about us? If you click the link, it'll insert it for you. You just hit accept. Or if it's a blank, blank box and you downloaded the app, enter code SMITTY. These drafts, we've got five more to start. Um, here's the link one more time. This will get you into this exact draft if you click this link, unless it fills up. Five more to start. How many live shows have you done? Sir Lax, uh, probably, I mean, I do like maybe 500 a year, maybe, I mean, that's a guess for five, for four or five years. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, maybe in year one and two, I didn't do one. I did like one a day versus multiple sometimes. Now I'm doing like maybe 500 plus a, a, a year. And those are just the live shows. And each of them are like at least an hour and a half. So you're talking about, you know, you're talking about like seven to eight hours a week of the main live streaming. No, no, more than that. So five times, probably two hour show on average, especially during the year. So probably like five times two is 10. So 10 hours a week on the main show. And then probably another uh probably six hours so i'd say 16 to 18 hours of live streaming a week minimum on youtube only not that's not ig and all that four more to start uh tebow did you use the code okay hector did you use the code okay appreciate you using that code it helps support the channel here's the link one more time underdog fantasy promo code smitty that link will insert code smitty for you three more to begin the draft um, I'm not going to live stream the draft. Uh, I'm just going to do the draft with you because it's going to be slow and offline. And somebody's going to go to the bathroom and take a potty break. And it's going to stop at pick eight anyway. But it'll be an eight-hour timer. Hector's in. Did you use the code, Hector? Appreciate you. All right, guys. I'll see you later tonight. We've got probably two or at least one or maybe two live streams or videos. And uh, we'll be we'll be, we'll be be cranking those out tonight. At least, at least, I don't know, at least two of them. One more to start, and then the draft will begin. Um, the show I'm probably going to do tonight will be, so we did the Ayuk show. Well, probably, it'll probably be on Josh Allen and the Bills, or Dak, or Dak Prescott, or it'll be a combined show on both of them. So Dak and the Cowboys and Josh Allen and the Bills, and talking about those situations right now. But I think it might be on Josh Allen. It might be that I believe the Buffalo Bills will make a big splash at wide receiver. I believe Adunze is probably on their radar. And they want, thank you Hector, and they want to get Roma Dunze. And they're going to try their best to get Roma Dunze. That's my gut feeling for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, one more to start and then we go. It's slow draft time. Link is in the live chat right above. Hit it, do it live, I'll drop it one more time. We should do more of these. You know what we can do? I can drop one of these almost every show. So even if we don't do a, a draft show, we can just drop a private draft at the end. We'll fill it up and then we'll do it slow. Slow style. Candlelight. Slow. Nice little romantic draft setting between 12 of us. Doing it live. Perps, appreciate you. Ron Navy, appreciate you. One more to start the draft. Click the link. It's right there. It's the third or fourth message up. Appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you to my IG people that are in the house. You guys are awesome. All right, the draft is beginning. The draft orders have been granted. We've got uh, A Y O N uh, Nick, I think. Uh, we got uh, Flame in the two. L Elm. Then uh, Zach in the four. Perps in the five. Asher in the six. 
uh, Goon Squad in the seven. I'm in the eight spot. Niner Beast in the nine. Um, Hef in the ten. Hod Prime in the eleven. The Bolt in the twelve. There we go. Draft begins in 14 seconds. Good luck to everybody. We'll do one of these at night, I think, and drop that link. There's no reason we can't have a draft going on constantly like this. Number two overall, Hector's Niner Beast. Okay, good. Glad to have you, Hector. Thank you. Flame, number two overall is going to be a surprise in this draft by Flame. Okay, let's see. Maybe we do plug in real quickly on this one. And just see how the first round goes. Let's do that real quick. Let's see how this draft goes. Flame is saying he's going to draft a surprise at number two overall. Took Bijan. Took Bijan. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't blame you, bro. I, I mean, try and get him to fall if you can. You know, take advantage. But, I mean, damn. You know, I mean, that's look, we thought that last year. Blackbeard to the moon. Appreciate you. Tebow to the moon. Fig, figures right as I finally get signed up. Uh, Tebow, I'll send you another right now. Okay? I'll send you another right now. We'll do another one for Tebow. This is a $4 draft, 12-person draft. Uh, create a private draft link. Copy said link. Uh, normally we'll do just one, but we want Tebow to get into the mix here. So let me copy this. Let me drop this into the YouTube live stream. Here is the link. Here you go, Tebow. Jump into this one. This is number two. Okay. This is number two. Get in. Do it live. 11 to start on that one. Let me go to this private draft that we're currently drafting in right now and put that back on screen. There you go, Tebow. Jump into that other one. Okay. There you go, Tebow. Do it live. This is the link. Let me copy this and paste it. I'm on the clock, I think, in one second in this draft that we're doing. This is the second draft right here. The one that I did special for Tebow so he could get in. There you go, Tebow. Do it. Tebow, did you get in? All right, Goon Squad's on the clock. He's gonna, he's gonna, who's he gonna take? Uh, St. Brown went, then JJ, then Brees Hall, then CD Lamb, then Bijan, then Christian McCaffrey. So Goon Squad is about to time out. He takes Tyreek Hill. That's a great value there. Tyreek Hill falling that far is crazy. Jamar Chase is pretty damn good. I'm gonna go Jamar. Jamar to me. So it went, it went uh, McCaffrey, Bijan, Lamb, Brees Hall, Justin Jefferson. Uh, Amon Ra, Tyreek fell, Chase fell, Niner Beast is on the clock, Hector, you're on the clock, bro, did you get into the second draft, Tebow, are you in, let me know, oh, and this is a 30 second, oh, damn, I'm sorry, guys, I didn't realize it was 30 second, oopsie, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't realize it was 30 second. They're normally they're normally slow drafts when you do those those private drafts. They must have upgraded that feature. I'm sorry, guys. I hope everybody can can last and draft. I'm not going to do the whole thing live, but I'll probably I'll have to draft now offline um, as I'm doing these other things that I was going to do. Uh, let's see here. Eight more to start on that other draft. Washington is the perfect situation for a QB. Absolutely no D and and worthy pass catchers everywhere, says Wayne Wayne. Well, they're going to have a good D, I think, bro. I think they will. I autoed Asher. Sorry, Asher. Smitty, they're both 32nd. I know, man. I, I, I Normally, they force you to do that. I didn't realize on these private ones, they're allowing you to, to choose... My bad, my bad, my bad. Perps, appreciate you with the $5 hauler. Perps to the moon. That was on me, guys. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, Chase at, at eight was fantastic value. So it went Kyron at nine, Gibbs, AJ Brown, Puka, Jonathan Taylor, Garrett Wilson, Saquon Barkley, Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake London, Devon A. Chan. I'm going to go A. Chan here. So I got A. Chan and Jamar. God, where's my A. Chan video? Bring him in, boys. Bring him in. Okay. Lower him down. Slow. Perfect. Appreciate that. Set him right there, there boys. Eight chan, 17 overall. Smash. Smash. You can't change it after the fact, perps. Rules are the rules, you know. They won't let you adjust anything. You just got to pick the draft. And apparently there was a, a, a eight hour timer going on. Running backs are flying. So are the wide receivers, though. They're, they're kind of even, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight running backs. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve wide receivers. Eight and twelve. That's kind of kind of normal. Sometimes wide receivers go a lot more. But yeah, Flames, sometimes it's weird. I don't think you can do that on an underdog. Yeah, you can't change it after the fact. Uh, six more to draft than the other one. My bad, guys. If you want, you can leave the other draft before it starts if you can't hang for it or whatever. You just click on that little, I think, info button at the top right, and it says leave. But I'll be in it. I'll, I'll draft. D, uh, Tebow says, this will be my first draft on underdog. Anything I should know? No, bro. Um, half PPR doesn't change things too much, to be honest with you, bro. I wouldn't focus too much on that half PPR makes it tough or different. It it, it's, it really doesn't change much at all. Half PPR, essentially, in my mind, I, I don't view PPR and half PPR any different at all. It really doesn't. And you can set a detailed queue. Yeah, you can. And then walk away if you wanted to. Most certainly. Most certainly, bro. All right. So after my HN, it went London with a Tyreek Hill pairing. Um, Devontae Adams with uh, St. Brown. Nico with JJ. Olave with Brees. Uh, Josh Jacobs with CD. And then, and then on the clock right now. Pick two as Bijan, DJ Moore, DK. Pick number one as McCaffrey, Debo, and Josh Allen. Which is a, a nice trio right there. I love that trio of, of McCaffrey, Debo, and Josh Allen. That's fantastic. Uh, CD, Josh, Jacobs, and Henry. That's pretty good. Brees, Chris, Alave, and who? Who are you getting? Uh, nice job, bare, bare Bones. Nice job, my guy. Ayuk to the Bills says Saul. Or Sal. Sal says Ayuk to the Bills. Malik Neighbors going to the Brees Hall owner with Alave. JJ, Nico, and Mike Evans going triple wide receiver. Uh, Amon Ra, Devontae Adams, and who does Asher take with this 30 overall pick? And then the 31 is on the clock, and then I'm on the clock. And uh, I don't have much of a, a big weight. Well... JD5, dump it off to Eckler or run. I wouldn't be expecting a lot out of Eckler, bro. I mean, he'll dump some off to Eckler, but Eckler wasn't probably going to explode anyway. He, he's good value at like seven or eight round territory for sure. But yeah, CMC is 28, John. So there's a high likelihood that he doesn't, he does not deliver the way he should. Let's see here, Reindeer. Um, I'm on the clock here, and I have HN Jamar. 
I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to go Hurts here. I don't I don't have a whole lot of Jalen Hurts, and I love the balance of this feel right here. I'm very much a, a weight on Mahomes guy, but in this particular group, I doubt he falls anyway to where he should anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the gamble and and grab my boy Jalen and pair him. And I think he, he's definitely capable of being number one overall fantasy football quarterback material anyway. So it's fine taking him in the third round. Take your shots on on take your shots on Jalen, take your shots on Josh Allen, take your shots on Burrow, take your shots on AR5, take your shots especially on Mahomes in round five. But there's no wrong or right way to draft your quarterback, middle round quarterback, which is exactly what this is. Jalen Hurts at the end of three is middle round quarterback drafting. This is not early quarterback drafting. And he's an absolute force. And I don't mind it one single bit. I just like the sound of JD5 and Eckler. It is going to be good. And Wayne, believe me, it's a good value. You know, Eckler in round seven, wherever he's going, is good value. I take them all all day long at that territory. But you're getting very zero risk, you know. You're getting a very zero risk player. Uh, Ziggy, show me the front door. Okay. So Patrick Mahomes went. I didn't think he would fall anywhere close. Uh, Travis Kelsey just went. Devontae Smith is there, which is fantastic. I don't mind that at all. Um, let's see here. Hurts. Uh, I got Hurts. I could go Devontae Smith here. I could also go, you know, I'll go Cooper Cup and take the gamble and say Jamar Chase, Cooper Cup, Devon A. Chan, Jalen Hurts. Feel pretty confident with that. That's a pretty good little stack there. Um, we need more people for the other draft. Here's the link for the second draft. Um, it, it also is 30 seconds. I apologize for that. I don't think I can end it or close it. If I leave... Shoot. If I leave that draft, we could redo it as a 30 second. If I leave it. I don't know if I... If I leave it, I think I leave it and you guys stay in though. So we'd all have to leave it. So it's up to you guys. But I, I dropped the link right there if anybody wants to get in on the second. I don't think the second one will fill. It'll fill, John. It'll just take some time. But it's up to you guys if you want to bail out of it. If we all bail out of it together, it, it, I don't know if it'll let me. It says it will. But if I try, it might like give me an error. But it'll let me bail out of it. But we'd all have to bail out of it together. I don't want to leave anybody there in that draft. Trey McBride, CJ Stroud, Penny, uh, Michael Pittman Jr., Almost said Penix Jr. Eight hour, yeah. I mean, sorry. Eight, we want to make it an eight-hour timer. It's up to you guys if you if you guys all want to bail out of it. These teams so far are pretty pretty good. Let's let's go through them all. Um, McCaffrey, Debo, Josh Allen. We'll see how this this team shapes up. Bijan, DJ Moore, DK on the clock. CD, Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, A. Richardson. Love it. Brees, Alave, Neighbors, Devontae Smith, Justin Jefferson, Nico, Mike Evans, McBride. Um, Amon Ra, Devontae, Diggs, and Stroud. Tyreek, London, Ayuk, and Pittman. I don't love the four wide receivers, to be honest, but you do you. Jamar, Devontae, uh, Devon Achan, Hertz, and Cooper. I like it. I really like my squad there. Kyron, Marvin, Harrison, Lamar, Kelsey. I like that. Gibbs, Barkley, Laporta, Mahomes. That's sick. I think the three best teams right now are my team, the nine slot, and the ten. And then maybe one, that one slot. So Jamar Chase, HN, Hurts, and Cooper Cup, I like mine a lot. But I almost like these other two teams as much or maybe, maybe more. Who's in front of my car or my house? What are these people doing? What are they doing? A party or something down the street. Um, Kyron, Marvin Harrison Jr., Lamar, and Kelsey is sick. 
Gibbs, Barkley, Laporta, and Mahomes is absolutely filthy. Uh, Puka, John, uh, what are these people doing back there? I'm like an old man now when people are in front of my house. Like, why are you parking in front of my house? And then when I park in front of somebody else's house and they give me gri they gripe, I'm like, what are you doing? You don't own the street? <laughs> it's so hypocritical. Puka, Jonathan Taylor, Dell, and Rashad White. A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, E.T.N. Waddle. These are all really good teams. Uh, Burrow and Anthony Richardson doing the... Ziggy off. Doing the bully quarterback uh, move with the C.D. Lamb team. I like that. That's not bad. Joe Mixon just went. Okay, so I'm almost on the clock here. You know, it's amazing where Rasheed Rice is falling because I didn't think people would react the way they are, and I'm glad I'm glad they are, are because I do not recommend grabbing them. Let's see here. I don't know who to take here. Kind of got thinned out. I'm up next right now. Guys, underdog fantasy promo code Smitty. Seven more to begin the other draft. Let's just let's just move forward with it. There's the link right there if anybody wants to join the next draft. I'm on the clock now. Rasheed Rice just got taken. That's good because I didn't want him anyway. I could go, you know, Mark Andrews is kind of undervalued. I got two old guys, and I, Andrews isn't that old, but I got two guys that you you wonder what's left right in the tank. So Andrews and Cooper Cup, but I, I like the value there. Um, Hertz, Achan, Chase, Cooper Cup, and Andrews is pretty damn solid. That's a pretty super good team. So went Cook after my pick, Hollywood Brown, Keenan Allen, and now uh, DeBalt is on the clock with doubles. The back-to-backs here. All right, guys, appreciate every one of you. Um, I'll see you all later. Do you guys want to bail? Let's bail on this other draft. Does everybody hear me? Bail on the other draft right now. Um, let me show you how to do it. So if we go into the other draft, it's right here. Click the info button at the top right corner. And then go down to the bottom and you're going to leave the draft. Okay? Leave the draft. We're going to leave the draft. I don't know if it vanishes for you guys at that point. And I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to go to the $4 drafts. And I'm going to try and find... Is there even a slow draft? I don't know that they have slow drafts right now. That might be the problem. That might be the problem. I don't see any slow drafts right now. on the clock in this one hold on Kittle I'll go Hopkins I, I had to reach I was gonna time out 11 more to start do we just join back in the one with Tebow it vanished for you Unfilled. It won't let me leave it. <laughs> it won't let me leave it. I guess join back in. If you want. I'm going to probably have to put this on Instagram. Or the De oh, Bolts in there, actually. I don't know. I guess join the draft, guys. Let's just... I don't want to leave uh, anybody out. I, and I know that Tebow wanted to jump in one. I guess the slow ones, all you can do is the, the fast ones right now. I don't think there are slow ones. So I'm back in that draft. Six more to start. Jump into it. All right, final phone call, then we're out of here. I'll be back tonight, though. Isaac, you got about 30 seconds to a minute. I, I do got to run. What, what can I do for you, pal? Hey, yo, yo. I'm just getting, I'm just getting on. 
Uh, it's all, you know, your title with IU. I just want to say I love the drama uh, with IU. No clue what's about to happen, but it, it's so typical of the Niners, the way they're doing things. I'm sure the Niners fans are just going nuts over this. But yeah, it, if, it, if it's... IU, Especially my buddies that, you know, my Niner buddies, they're like, they think I'm so ridiculous. They're like, oh my God, you're you're just drama. Like, they don't dramatize when this stuff happens to the other teams. It's just the nature of dealing with people that are, they got goggles on for their fan, their team, their fan base. But, um, yeah, the, Ni- the Niners are definitely crapping the bed, you know, in terms of handling this. They've done it time and time again. Historically, this does not work. The, the, the Debo did it, and it'll be fine. Debo did this. It, that doesn't work. Clearly, Debo had a horrible year. Bosa had a horrible year. You're literally marching Ayuk down a path of having a horrible year by repeating the, the situation with Debo. Debo took a full year to get back, right? And obviously, Debo did amazing last year. And he, you know, he bounced back. But do you do the Niners really have um, perps? They don't do they don't do anything but 30 second invite drafts. Is what I was saying earlier. So unfortunately, we just jump back in the same one. That's the same draft. So yeah, do the what do the Niners do? You know, they're going to continue to go down the same road time and time again. Like, what benefit is it to wait on Ayuk and make him pissed off and make the fan base hate him? You know, half the fan base is yeah. starting to turn yeah. on him, like they did with Debo. Just no, it does no good. And it they does should. no good. They should. Well, they you know they should. should, but should they? I'm not necessarily saying that there isn't some blame to the player because he's under contract. But it's it's a highly accepted process in a contract year, to when you have done really well, to to you know come in and, and, and approach it like this, and it's very widely accepted. The team's very much accepted, so I, I blame him to a degree, sure. But at the end of the day, like the team's gonna sign him anyway. Why put him through this? Why not just get it done? You know. Exactly. Well said. But you know, I hear you. All right, uh, all right, uh, all right, my dude. I'll let you go, bro. All right, Isaac. Appreciate you later, bro. Uh, call in tonight. We'll be right, live on on at least the 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 Buffalo Bills situation. All right, later, uh, Denny. You got thirty seconds. I'm on the, on the way out the door. You're way out of line. You're way out of line, Smitty. Why, dude? Drake, man, I need him on three. I need this guy. He's going three. I need this guy. He's probably going three. He's probably going three. I'm not out of line. I, I do believe that's probably what's going to happen. I think right now Drake May is trending toward New England at three. So we're on the same page, Denny. We're on the same page, Denny. We're on the same page. Okay, sweetie. Do you zip it? I love it. I'm looking happy about it. I yeah. hope, I so, hope we get Drake better. May. You know what I mean? I just want to see him zip it. Did you, you know? wake Did you wake up from a, from a little bit of a nap? Be honest. Because you fell asleep on the phone line, I think. And you sound crystal clear now. You sound clear-headed. You sound ready to go. You sound ready to co-host the show. I'm ready to rap, dude. You're my best friend. Thanks, Denny. Hey, you want to do, uh, dude? You're my best friend. You want to do, uh, you want to do karate in the basement? We could. I don't we, give. Yeah, we could do some karate. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Denny. <laughs> no, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. You, you're my boy. Anything you else? Know what I mean, you are. Yeah, you're my you're my boy too, Blue. Anything else, bro? Oh, nothing but, uh, you know, I have to be honest. I kind of want uh, that big boy. Uh, the big boy. Who's that kid? Now? The guy. The, you know the guy. You know the thing. Yeah, the kid. The big boy. <laughs> the big boy. I, I, I don't know who the big boy is, Denny. Who's the big boy? Drake. Drake. Drake May. Drake May. Kid. <laughs> Here we are again, full circle. Zip it. Drake May. Zip it. The big boy. All right, hey Denny, I gotta go. Oh, Appreciate. You. I'll be back tonight. We're gonna be talking. Right, we're, yeah. we're gonna be. We're gonna be right, talking Josh Allen. All, all right. All, all right. right. I'll I be love back. you. I love you. All right. Love you, love you, Denny. Bye. <laughs> Denny sounds good. He sounds like he's been. Uh, he took a little. Took a little nap. Came back strong. He's zipping it. Had a. Had a. Yeah. He had a coffee or two. Says Wayne. That's certainly the case. Uh, five more to start in the other draft, guys. Five more to start. It's a fast draft. I'm sorry they don't have slow drafts right now via invite. It's a four dollar draft with like forty something dollars in prizes, but it's fun because it's intimate. It's a it's a twelve draft, you know, between us, and it goes the season. So you get to check on it. You get to call me out and say, "Hey, Smitty, go check the draft I'm in." Here's the link. I'm beating. I'm beating you, Smitty. 
My team's better than you, Smitty. All right, I'll see you all tonight. Buffalo Bills talk tonight. Deuces. Appreciate you. He's Kyron. He's seven feet tall. And he knows how to handle a ball. He's Kyron. He can take frowns and turn them upside down with his touchdowns. Live Monday through Friday. 8 p.m. Eastern every single Monday through Friday, which is essentially this show. This show, even though we went live a little early, uh, we've been live for two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, we went live way before the start time and just dipped straight into the show. So that's how we roll. That's how Dad did it. That's how we do it. That's how America does it. And it's worked out pretty well so far. See you all tonight.